Oh, here we go. Okay, there we go. Appreciate it, guys. Somebody hit me with the with the no sound. Said they couldn't hear the sound, so we got that taken care of, guys. All right, so let's see who we have checking in. We have Mark E. Scott. What is going on? He is a member of the money team. Guys, remember, I told you this week we have something special for the money team. All right, guys, so if you are interested in becoming a member of the money team, make sure you click the join button right down below. It'll just give you a little bit of information about the special perks and things like that, that the, that the money team gets, you know, along with actually being, you know, kind of standing out in the crowd when it comes to the chats. All right. We have another member of the money team stepping in. What is going on, Jason? Good to see you. Good, good to have you in the comment section. All right. All right. So we see, I see some people coming in here. It looks like you guys want to find out about these jigs. <laughs> Yeah, you want to learn a bit, a little bit of something about how to get out here and catch these big bass. All right, so let's see. Let me just go in here and just check out who we have coming into the chat. All right, and if you could, guys, just hit me with a one real quick. I just want to make sure you guys can hear me because I did see that I was muted right at the beginning. But, you know, sometimes we just struggle streaming a little bit. We'll get things right and get into it. All right, so, yeah, in the chat, just hit me with the one. Just want to make sure everybody can hear me okay and see me okay. All right, looking good, looking good. All right, guys, so for tonight, we got a special guest. Going to be bringing him up in just a second because, I mean, I know you guys want to get out here and see what's going on with these jigs. I mean, we're going to get into it, kind of deep into it, guys. Maybe we'll go over some things that you haven't heard before. Maybe there will be some things that you have heard before and you want to throw a little bit of input on that. So as always, I will drop the link. If any of you guys want to come up, ask some questions and things like that, once we kind of go over a little bit of the topics and things like that, then I'll bring a few of you up. Maybe you can ask a question too. And also, don't forget, we're going to do the How Would You Fish It segment. It's kind of like a special edition. I'm going to do that one a little different this time. See how you guys like that. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it, guys. Let's see who we have joining into the live stream tonight. So we have somebody that was a little early. Somebody was early this time. We have my opinion. He said Hawk is going to be in there talking about he could just look at the laydowns and feel there was a bass in there. Okay, yeah. I mean, you know, Chicken Hawk, he says he has those old-time skills. So that's what he's talking about right there. He doesn't need any electronics. But, hey, man, I'm going to put those electronics on my boat and get out there and put in some work. All right, let's see what else my opinion has to say. He says, I sure hope nobody starts talking about fishing a jig with a 15-foot cane pole with a 12 what is that 12 foot of line on it uh oh that's a little bit dipping into the last live stream guys you know we were kind of going at it we were having a good time talking about some old school fishing fishing versus some new school fishing all that good kind of stuff all right delta bass is in the live stream he says cane pole that would be funny there we go all right then like i said we have mark scott checking in member of the money team darren pearson is in the live stream what's going on dp glad you made it back all right, let's see who is this we have here checking in. We have Michael with high-tech redneck fishing. <laughs> what is going on with that, Michael? Now, let's see. Now, is this the 10, 12, and 13-pound Michael? You just changed your um, changed your uh, your icon. Maybe that's the same Michael. Is it? Just let me know. All right, then we have Cajun Rob checking in. What is going on, Cajun Rob? All right, down there putting in some work. Uh-oh, guys, look who we have here. Ah, we have Mako Mills. Here we go. Let's go. All right. So Mako Mills, special shout out to him. He is the one that kind of put this together for you guys. So as you get out there and you start tossing these jigs around and bringing in those twos, threes, fours, five, six, and seven pounders this year, you know, you might want to think about Mako. He's the one who kind of put this in, in, in effect for us. All right. Then we have Jason. All right. Gave you a shout out member of the money team. And real quick, if you guys are interested in becoming a member of the money team or just finding out some of those perks to come along with it click that join button it'll give you some quick info and hey we'll see and also as a reminder guys the people that are members of the money team i have some you know I, i've been telling you we have some special perks coming up for you so when we get into this jig fishing you know uh i, I have a few things that i need to uh bring to your attention but also anybody that is a member of the money team Put in the comments, do any of you guys fish jigs? And if you do, let me know. Do you fish shallow offshore? Um, you know, I'm just getting some info, but there's a reason behind that. But, yeah, go ahead and get active down in the comments, guys. Let's see who else we have in here. We have Hudson Logan Fishing. 
what is going on? What's going on? Yeah, I think you reached out to me on Instagram um, a week or two back. All right, Hudson Logan Fisher says, hey, Money Bass. All right, Cajun Rob says, jigs are money. That is right. Jigs are going to catch those big fish for you guys. Those are some tournament winning fish. All right, Delta Bass had you guys hit me up with the one. Let me know everything is looking good, sounding good. All right, you guys are definitely getting active in the chat. So as I always say, if you guys are active in the chat, it makes for a great live stream. And also, what we talk a lot about on this channel is your electronics. I'm running Hummingbird. Um, let me see. I have the Mega 360, Mega Live. I do not have the Target Lock, but there are some guys in the subscribe well, in the chat, my subscribers, people that do have all of those systems, and they also have Garmin. There are guys with Live Scope. So if you're running to, into any issues with your electronics, always feel free to put whatever type of issue that you are having in the comment section. If I can't answer that question, there will definitely be somebody in there that can help you out. We've had several guys that have come along having some issues by the end of the live stream. They had the answers to their questions and they hit me up later on. And let me know that everything wor was working fine. So the information did help them out. So keep that in mind, guys. We are here to help. We are here to help each other out, not only on the water, off the water with your electronics questions and all that good kind of stuff. And also when the tournament season kicks in, we're going to be coming back. We need to see some bragging going on in here. We need to see some checks being cast in first, second, third places, guys. All right. So let's see who else we have in here. We have Jermaine Roach says, Jig, we let me see. We will be here this time next year. I hate a what is what is going on with that? Come on, man. You said, Jig, we will be here to this time next year. I hate a jig. Hopefully someone can give me a change of heart on here. Uh-oh, uh-oh, guys. Yeah, I mean, come on, Jermaine. Let me see. What is your PB, Jermaine? Go ahead and drop that in the comments. I want to know what your PB is. We're going to work on this jig for you this year. Uh-oh, guys, we have somebody else coming back. We have Sonar 5. Check it in on the live stream. Evening money. Nothing better than getting a little jiggy. There we go. That's right, getting a little jiggy with it. All right, then we have Michael. Let's see, Michael with the high-tech redneck fishing. He says, yes. <laughs> I can't remember what the question was. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is 10, 10, and 13-pound Mike. He's out there catching those big fish. Had to change his icon. Look at that, guys. He had to put one of those 10-pounders. Maybe that's that 13 that he's holding up right there. So he had to change his logo to let us know what he, what's really going on out there on the lake. He said, this is Michael who caught the three big bass last week. There we go. There we go. That's what I thought. All right. Then we have Delta Bass says, I love jigs. Got three Plano Edge boxes, boxes, football structure, and swim jigs. Hey, guys. Now, notice what he said, those Plano boxes. Do you keep those jigs and your other lures in the waterproof Plano boxes? <laughs> Now, I hope hopefully you're not keeping them in the ones that are sit there and, and gather that moisture and stuff. And that is something that I wanted to show you guys. This is the type of uh, box that I keep my jigs in and also my crankbaits, my other lures. I had to change everything over from just the plain boxes that are not waterproof. Once that water gets in there and starts rusting out those lures, especially the ones that you have your trailers and everything already set in. Man, that will be a bad day. So, guys in the description i have links in there i always tell you guys if i run across any deals any discounts anything like that i always put those in the description of the videos just go down there right now we have a there's a link in there for 10 percent off of tackle warehouse gift cards and also a few other links for some products that we will be talking about and i did put a link in there for these plano boxes um, they actually have those on discount right now. So definitely make sure you guys get those. You do not want to look, look into that tackle box and see a, bus, a bunch of rusted uh, hooks and jigs and things like that. So that's that's a good, uh, good comment right there. Delta Bass says, I love jigs. He has three Plano Edge boxes full of football structure and swim jigs. There you go. All right, Red Boat says, the door is open. I'm in. All right, what is going on? Red Boat checking in. He makes his own jigs. All right, all right. So we might have somebody that can add a little something to the to the live stream. There we go. All right. So then we have Daisy Easy D Maddox. He says, "Evening money fishing Lake Lanier again Thursday. What is going on with that? Hey, I might be able to squeeze a day or two out there next week. I know it's 
you know, it's been kind of cold out here, so I don't know. You know, I mean, it feels kind of nice and cozy in the house, but yeah, it's about time to get out there and start putting in some work on the water. All right, Cajun Rob says, I fish jigs both shallow and deep. Most versatile lure in the tackle box. Yes, sir. All right, he's out there doing his thing. All right, Mark E. Scott, member of the money team. He says, lots of jig fishing for me. Offshore, I love swim jigs. All right, there we go. Mark, I was specifically talking about you uh, just earlier today. I know you've been out there. You, you're you catching those fish offshore with, in those. You're finding th stuff on your 360, turning that mega live over there and flipping those jigs out to those fish, and he's putting in some work. So Mark is out there doing his thing. He is also a member of the money team. Hmm. And Mark says... Let me see. A lot of jig offshore. So we, we might have a little something for you, Mark. So you're doing that offshore fishing. All right. Then we have Michael with the hot whistle. Let's let's just stick to Michael for right now. When we get a chance, uh, let me see. When you get a chance, money, check out my video of rig neck ice fishing. Uh-oh. So you switched over to doing some ice fishing. All right. Let's see if you can catch those 10 and 13 pounders on doing some ice fishing. All right. Then Jermaine Roach says nine, nine off a crankbait whoa whoa okay so i see why it's going to be kind of hard to get you to switch from that jig you're like you're out there used to some, some of that power fish and you want to keep moving and you're getting some good results with it but hey maybe maybe we'll be able to to change it up a little bit for you all right then we have hudson logan fishing says i have heard of let me see i have heard what is that prosper baits make good jigs all right. So, yeah, we're going to get into it, guys. I caught it. Then Darren Pearson says, I caught a nine pound bass at Lake West Point during practice. Uh oh, <laughs> during practice. Don't you hate that? I caught an eight seven during practice. Man, that was not a good. I mean, it was a good day, but, you know, I would have rather have caught it the following day on Saturday. All right. So let's see. Let me get through a few more of these comments and then we'll go ahead and get into it, guys. All right. So we have Jason. Let me see. He says, definitely have pulled some nice fish off of brush pals with a swim jig, 15 to 20 foot of water. Whoa. All right. So take note of that. Jason is a member of the money team and he is talking about swim jigs. All right. So we have Mark E. Scott talking about offshore jig fishing, member of the money team. Jason is fishing some swim jigs and he's killing them in 15 to 20 foot of water. I remember you mentioning that a while back. All right. Then Red Boat says, those are the boxes I use. All right. So, yeah. So those Plano boxes, those waterproof Plano boxes, guys, think about it. Like I said, the link is in the, the description for any discounts that are available on those. All right. My opinion says, offshore, my favorite jig is a Jim. What is that? Monya? Monya? Hey, guys, don't crucify me. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. Rock jig with no weed guard, menace trailer. All right. Then we have Hudson Logan says, the Plano boxes edge have a water wick in them. All right, yeah, so I actually put um, some additional little absorption uh, pads inside of mine also. So I bought some of those off of Amazon. I didn't put that link in the description, guys, but I'll pull it up and put it in there after the live stream. So if anybody's interested in that, and basically all I do with that is just put one of those little packs in each compartment on in my um, tackle, in the tackle box itself, because I've had an entire tackle box go bad with rusted hooks and i do not want to experience that again so yeah so i take extra extra precautions with that all right so we have jason waterproof plano or a must with no rust there we go all right then sonar fishing says i just tied up 30 new jigs this weekend 30 <laughs> new jigs let's see there's a reason why somebody's tying us 30 new jigs he knows what he's doing if those jigs are getting broke off every once in a while, then hey, you're you're fishing them right. So yeah, sometimes if you're if you're that jig man, you're gonna need some extra jigs. You don't want to just go out there with one or two of your favorite jigs and think you're gonna have a good day if you're having a good day. They they will eventually get broke off. All right, so we have Vernon Neal says, "My man, I'm tuning in. Love me some jig fishing. It's hard to put the jig rod down sometimes. That is right. Once you get into it. All right, guys, let me see. I got one or two more comments and then." Let's go ahead and get into the topic for the night. So Michael says, I use Terry's custom jigs. They are made in Shelby, North Carolina. Peanut butter and jelly color works great for me. Uh-oh, there you go. I mean, I hear a lot of people mentioning that. There's some other people there in the comments that have mentioned that peanut butter and jelly PBJ is putting in some work for them on the lake. All right, now let's see. We have fish. Nice and simple. 
says up shallow flipping a swim jig into cover and swimming it out. All right, there we go. So yeah, so those are just a few of the type of just so we've we've seen swim jig, offshore jig. It looks like that's pretty much, the, and then maybe somebody said like a punching jig, something like that. So we're gonna get into those. But let's see, guys. Let me just make sure that I have uh, got everybody caught up. All right. And just going through here, um, I'm just seeing where somebody had told me that they couldn't hear. So I got that squared away, got everything squared away. All right, guys. So what we're going to do, without further ado, let's go ahead and bring up our special guest for the evening. What is going on? We have Colin. What is going on, Colin? How are things going? Oh man, I can't complain. I mean, I could. I mean, I'm not fishing right now, but at least we're talking about <laughs> fishing. So, you know. Hey man, sometimes that's just as good because I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody's been sitting around watching videos. So, what more could you ask for than if you're not on the lake to be able to hop on a live stream and talk about fishing with some other pe like minded people? Man, it, it kills me. I've been watching a ton of fishing videos, but it's like, okay, I want to, I want to go, I want to go. And of course, you know, Christmas just happened. So we all have new gear that we're all just, I want to go use it. I want to go use it. And I may or may not have gone overboard on a real, um, <clears throat> uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> but I mean, you, you know, once that, once that tournament season starts up, you might cash a check or two, you know, can kind of recoup some of that maybe. <laughs> I mean, it's not even so much the price that I went overboard on. It was the size. Um, so Whoa, okay. despite, despite being being a jig guy, and that's, you know, my big thing, uh, I do use swim baits. And I, oh, okay. I, need to, I need to go get a big reel. And it was bigger than I thought, but I'm happy with it. So, gotcha. But All right. All right. So let's go ahead and get into it. Just kind of introduce yourself and tell people about your, you know, about your, you know, what you do with these jigs and everything. Everybody's wanting to know who is Colin. Let's go ahead and get into it. So, uh, my name's Colin Shore. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee now. Uh, grew up in Pennsylvania. So started fishing up north, had to adjust massively to fish in the south. Uh, Jigs were honestly growing up, not anything that I ever used. Uh, it was a few years ago. I decided, you know what? I really want to give this thing a shot. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I was doing, where I was going. I got online and tried to find all the information I could, but realistically, you're only going to find so much and you're going to find the same thing over and over and over and over again. You're not going to find, here's the secret to jig fishing. Here's how you actually catch jig or how you catch fish on a jig. And so I was like, hey, I'm going to give this a shot. And I'm impatient. I have ADHD. So I want to go, 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 go power fishing. I love. Right. Uh, not so much anymore. It's, it's gone the other direction, but that was, that was what I did. And I was throwing a jig around one day, middle of the afternoon. I'd been using a buzz bait all day. I had had a massive day, just a ton of fish, some decent ones, nothing of any real size, but it was that mid summer, middle of Tennessee hot. It's like, all right, I'm looking at my watch like maybe I ought to go home sitting in two and a half feet of water, maybe on my kayak back up off of a, you know, an offshoot on a lake. I could see just this much of a brush pile sticking out and tossed a black and blue jig at it. Okay. And I'm like, Oh man, I got hung up. I didn't get hung up. Um, and it was the first real jig fish that I ever caught. All right. Three that I ever caught and it was six and a half. And so from yeah. that forward, I was like, okay, there's something to this started using it more and more and decided, you know, I'm not digging what I'm finding in the stores uh, for, a, for a multitude of reasons. You know, I'm, I'm paying, you know, X amount of dollars for this jig that there's not really a lot of time and effort put into necessarily, you know, a green yeah. pump, oh, let's still throw some green and brown together and that's perfect. Okay. Technically, yes. But, you know, there's a lot more to it. You can add a lot more depth to green pumpkin than just that. And, I got really annoyed because I would go look at all of these and it's like, this looks almost cartoonish. You know, some right. of the swim jigs that I would see were almost cartoonish. And yes, we're looking to accentuate the colors underwater, but there's a difference between accentuating the colors and putting a cartoon under the water. Right. And, you know, if something's moving and there's a hungry fish, it's going to bite, certainly. But what's going to get more bites? And so that was where my mind always went. And, you know, I got sick of spending five, six bucks on a jig, sometimes seven, eight bucks when I wanted to get one that was maybe a little bit better to then realize, you know, this isn't actually what I wanted. Um, 
I couldn't find a decent bluegill swim jig to save my life. You know, th- again, yeah. that was the main one that I'm like, those were just cartoony. <laughs> And right, the, yeah, yeah. The col- the colors are kind of over exaggerated and stuff like that. And yeah. also, real quick, guys, we will get into some comparisons between actual crawfish colors, looking at actual crawfish, and the comparison to the jigs and how those can be made to match. I guess match the hatch. But yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, you're good. Uh, but you know that was that was one of my things, and bluegills specifically is where I stick to is because there's so much to a bluegill there are so many colors when you catch a bluegill and look at it you know most of us we catch a bluegill and go, yeah, that was funny toss it back because we're, we're we're fishing for bass but if you stop and take a minute to really look at a bluegill and appreciate what's there it's such a colorful fish that when right. it's underwater you know fish see things very differently than we do the colors that are muted to us pop to a bass so okay all of those colors we're just missing, you know, the, the underlying color in a bluegill is purple looking between the scales. That's where you'll find that underlying color. The scales themselves are green and blue and purple and Brown all mixed together. And it depends on how you're looking at it. And that was one of the things that I would, would drive me nuts. Like, why can't we find something that's this close? And so that's how I got my start into it and, you know, started just buying heads and tying my own. And it's become much more since then, you know, now, I actually have a company, RPM Jigs, and you know, gone a long, long way from where I was. But gotcha. it's gone from never used a jig to now I never put a jig down. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. And so your company, RPM Jigs, so you pretty much make custom jigs. Do you um like if someone has a particular way that they want to set up, say they have a number of strands or a certain color uh, yeah. spectrum that they want? Do you you know like say if they send you a picture and say, hey, I want you to imitate this? Do you guys do that type of custom jig making and stuff like that too oh yeah so for something like that just hit us on instagram it's just rpm jigs uh you're gonna get me i say us it's just me um you'll get me and if you you know if you've got a jig that you want to match awesome if you've got a bait fish or a crawfish that you want to match honestly that's one of my favorite things to do so send it over and let's have some fun Um, a couple of the jigs that are in my overall lineup actually came from live matches from friends of mine like hey th- these are some some crawfish that are local in my area can you make something for it and it's a lot of fun for me because i get to you know get into the details and see all of the different colors in a crawfish because at first glance you know myself included i look at a crawfish quickly like that like okay i saw two maybe three colors right start looking at it looking at it that's when i start seeing the depth and the different colors that are there and so that's uh, live matches to me are just so much fun Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And I see a few guys with some comments down here in the, in the comment section. Let me go ahead and and just see if we can get caught up on these real quick. So I don't get too far behind and then we'll just hop into a few questions so we can get into it and kind of go through a step-by-step process because we have guys, of course, that are looking at it from the expert point of view. I mean, they've been fishing jigs and they're going to say, well, Hey, that's not how I do mine. And I fish mine this way, all that kind of stuff, all the way to people who um, you saw somebody earlier. I mean, he's out there catching nine pounders, but he's not a jig fisherman. So hey. we're going to go f- f- from, from some of the basics um, that will kind of help guys out. And then we'll kind of advance from there. So just kind of um, go through things in that um, kind of order for people. But let me just check out a few of these comments real quick just to see where I left off, just to see if anybody has any questions so far. All right, let's see. All right, so here we go. So we have Mako Mills saying, welcome, Colin. Glad to see you, buddy. All right, so we have Mako checking in. All right, then we have another regular coming in. We have Harry says, good evening, Money Bass. All right, then I guess Tyler's re- reacting to that nine-pounder caught on a crankbait. All right, and he says he got a haircut. <laughs> All right. All right, then Harry says he's talking about cartoons. Is he calling DP a cartoon? Or we got... <laughs> Harry's the jokester that's in the, in the comments all the time. All right, so Fish says, hey, Colin, RPM jigs. All right, all right. So it looks like somebody knows a little something about some RPM jigs. All right, my opinion says six cents makes a heck of a bluegill jig color. So I yeah, can't, I, get, I can't argue that. They do. Gotcha. All right, so yeah, so you know about those jigs. All right, so Red Boat says, that's why I start making my own jigs. The jigs were costing too much. Right. And so I, I started trying to do that too, guys, but I didn't want to get too much into the lead pouring. So where I stopped that was just making my own jig skirts. But we'll talk about that in just a minute, too. All right. So Delta Bass says, yep, purple. Um, yep, purple, that PN, PNB and jelly black and blue works. 
here in Mississippi. Yeah, that black and blue is a universal thing. That's kind of like the theme behind the money bass colors, that black and blue. But, you know, I had to throw a little green in there, represent a little bit of money that you actually you spend money. <laughs> You may make a little money, but you, you're spending a lot of money whenever you're doing, out here fishing. All right, so Mako Mills says, in 2023, I will use college jigs. All right, Mako Mills is coming back on the scene. All right, that is going to be a good good thing, good thing. All right, so Team Zipper Lips. Uh-oh, look at this, guys. He says, don't forget Randy Blockett's plain old, old school $10 jig. Goodness gracious, $10. Yes, sir. That's, I mean, so I don't know, guys. That sounds a little expensive to me for a jig. I mean, I guess it depends on how you're fishing them and stuff, too, because me, I'm throwing mine straight into stuff that I may not get those fish back out. I mean, get the jig back out of sometimes. So if I'm, if I know I'm tying on a $10 jig, it's going to make me a little skittish <laughs> about where I put that thing in. But he says, I got to say, that just blew my mind that someone would pay that much for it. <laughs> For a rag mop. <laughs> ah, come on, man. Come on, man. I mean, people out there to each his own. You got to fish with what you feel confident with. But yeah, I guess I kind of agree with you as far as the price range. And like I said, depending on how you fish it, um, it will make you kind of be hesitant whenever you may need to throw that thing straight into a brush pal or a lay down that you may not get that jig back out of, but you may want that eight, nine, 10 pounder that's, that's in there hiding in that lay down. All right, then Harry says, the hawk is an expert. Man, come on, the chicken hawk ain't no jig expert. All right, then Sonar 5 says, the only way I fish a jig incorrectly is to keep it dry. There we go, there we go. All right, let me just see how, okay, we just have a few more in here, and then we'll get into some questions. All right, so Michael says, what type hooks are used on the RPM jig? All right, so we'll get into that in just a second. I'm pretty sure we'll talk about that. All right, Harry says, thanks, Colin, for coming on. How much are your jigs? All right, so we'll get into that too. But again, guys, if you are a member of the money team, <laughs> might have a little something special coming up for you. All right, and let's see. So Harry also says, thanks, Colin, for coming on. Okay, I already got that one. How much are your jigs? All right, then Team Zipper Lip says, by the way, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Keep up the great work. All right, really, really appreciate that. All right, and okay, we have some guys in there going back and forth a little bit. Delta Bass says, in my opinion, yep, six cents is money. All right, now DP, DP is the man. He is the jig man. He says, knows more like cat and mouse. Tom and Jerry, you the mouse. Uh-oh, so Harry and, and Darren in there going, going at it already. All right, so Team Zipperless says, look it up. I'm not kidding. I believe you. There's some expensive things out there. But, hey, I mean, I don't know, man. We'll get into it. So Michael says, what style heads are available for RPM jigs? All right, so we'll get into that. Let me got – I've got two more in here. All right, guys, we have 360-second Campbell. Now, this is a crankbait, man. Let's see if, I mean, sometimes you may be able to fish a jig like a crankbait. I mean, hey, you know, we have swim jigs. All right, so let's see. He says, stopping by to say hi. Can't stick around, but I do like to get jiggy with it. All right, all right. <laughs> all right, then we have Double H outdo Outdoors. Uh-oh, guys. Now, seeing jigs has brought him out of the woodworks. Because Double H Outdoors, now, this is definitely a jig, man. He can have 15 rods on deck. And each one of those are going to have a jig <laughs> on them. He fishes it. I mean, you, you remember uh, Forrest Gump's buddy? <laughs> Whenever he talks about he's naming shrimp for about three hours. <laughs> Double H Outdoors, he does the same thing. He'll say, I have a swim jig. I have a deep diving jig. I have a jig. I have a, this kind of, I mean, he's, he'll go through them for you. But he's out there catching some big fish. He was killing them on Gunnersville. All right, then we have Zipper Lip says, they sold out too. Wow. Oh, sold out of those $10 jigs, man. But hey, I mean, his channel, he has a lot of subscribers on his channel. So any product he puts out, people are going to, you know, they're going to hop right on it. All right. Then Harry says, be careful, DP. You might get hit in the top of the head while you're, rec while you're reclining. Everyone hit the like button. All right. So yeah, guys, yeah, definitely hit the like button, guys. It really does help the channel. Really appreciate that, Harry. Yeah. Hitting the like button, it really does kind of help push it out there. And also, guys, take a second to send the link to this video to some guys that you may know. I mean, I know you're going to be fishing against them. <laughs> So you may not want them to know this info that we're going to be getting into. But come on, guys, it really does help out, help out the channel. Just shoot out a quick text to your friends. Let them know that we are live. If they have questions, comments, anything like that, they can hop into the live stream. And I will also be dropping, dropping the link. So if anybody wants to hop up on the panel, you guys can do that, too. 
All right. And then DP, uh -oh, let's see what DP said. Harry, don't get DP started. He says, no, I tie my own jigs. But my question is, do the fish, uh, let me see, a hair jig in the wintertime, like a jig on the bottom, or does he hop it? So, all right. So we're going to get into some techniques too. All right. So <laughs> double H outdoors. All right. So he, yeah. So he's, uh, that's the jig man right there. Darren Pearson, you know how I, I don't have anything to say to that next question. All right, and two more. We have Team Zipper Lips. I only drag in the wintertime, no hopping. All right, yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, people, are, they'll want to lessen the action of those jigs whenever that water gets colder. All right, have a member of the money team hopping back in. Colin, what is your favorite color for Great Lakes area? Big football smallies. Oh, I've seen Colin holding up a few, a few football, I mean, a few of those, uh, Smallies too, so he knows a little bit about that. So I mean, this is a member of the money team. Let's go ahead and answer his question now. So he says, "What was or is your favorite color for Great Lakes for the Great Lakes area? Big football, chartreuse, hair jigs. Period. Um, if you're if you're chasing smallmouth, it does not matter what time of year. And people may argue with me. That's totally fine <clears throat> because somebody said it before. The only way you're fishing a jig wrong is keeping it dry, and that is that is All right." the true uh, honest to goodness true uh, but hair jigs small mouth can't stay off of them and okay go ahead and hold that up again real quick so we can so we can see that yeah so this this is just got like a casting head on there archie style but here you know there's the important thing you got the hair in there black and chartreuse and i have to apologize this has been sitting in my tackle box for a minute it's already been wet so anybody who uses a hair jig knows it's kind of stuck until it hits the water again uh but I do actually throw a trailer on these, and not everybody does. I'll use a very small green pumpkin trailer. I know it seems very strange with a black and chartreuse bait. I will take that out onto a river, a lake. doesn't matter where. If there are smallmouth, I'll weed out the largemouth and just crush the smallmouth. And with mm. Great Lakes, big smallmouth out there, big smallmouth. And I'm, I'm not sure what depth you're in. Uh, just as you use a hair jig, keep in mind that it's going to rocket through the water a lot faster than a standard silicone skirt jig will. That silicone slows it down. So you have that nice slow drop. So if you use a half ounce hair jig, there, there's no action on the drop. Just know that it's just straight down. Think yeah. about using a slightly lighter jig than you would normally use and let that hair do all the work. Maybe give it yeah. a few every now and then but smallmouth can't stay off of it i mean all of my biggest smallmouth and I, I sent you a couple pictures they've all come off right. of those hair jigs like i mean you can use a myriad of things to catch smallmouth and you know yeah smaller profile baits may work however big jigs work too right yeah because uh, i mean that's what i've seen a lot like the the smallmouth they'll go after those ned rigs those smaller size baits and if you could hold that one back up again and just kind of go through the like let's say you're out using it on the water what rod reel line size and then what act do you cast it reel it let it drag on the you know what i mean just just go through a full cast of how that would how you would fish something like that that's going to depend on where i'm at so if i'm in a river system um and especially in the winter and somebody, I, I can't remember who said they're dragging all winter. Most of the time in the winter I'm dragging to. Um, if I can find a river with a nice slow flow and right here locally, I've got the Cumberland river and the Harpeth river, the two that come to mind for small mouth. I'll just drag as my boat goes, give it a few pops every now and then, but I'm talking along big, you know, ledges, drop offs, everything like that. I'm not just floating out in the middle of the river going wee and hoping something finds it. I am targeting yeah doing but a slow drag and letting the hair do the work uh, that that's one of the one of the amazing things about a hair jig is how little you have to do this will look like something truly alive and moving and so you can kind of see everything in there when that's underwater yeah. all of this just every bit of water movement makes this move back and forth up and down you really don't have to do much and that's part of the reason that it sticks out to smallmouth I wish I knew the reason, but smallmouth and chartreuse go together like that. Gotcha. And then so how do you go about making those? Like what material is that? This one, this is actually artificial hair. It depends on what I'm using. I use a lot of buck, uh, bucktail. Okay. Uh, so gotcha. If I'm doing something like that. I'll use marabou, which is more feathers. Mm -hmm. uh, 
it, it just depends on kind of what I'm wanting to go for. This is meant to be a little bit more stout. I'm going to throw this into areas. I'm going to throw this into more, more structure, things like that. That's going to be a little bit heftier than a marabou, which is a feather, which, you know, if I, to if I toss that into brush enough times, I'm just getting a trailer back. You got <laughs> you know, it. The nature of the material. Buckskin, I'm using, or buckskin, uh, bucktail, I'm using when, you know, the water is a little bit quicker. It's a, it's a stiffer hair. So down below a dam in a spillway, uh, if you're chasing striper or something like that, perfect time yeah. to throw it and just let it hop along. Okay. So you're actually throwing it. Cause I know some people they'll throw, throw out their, their hair jigs and they'll fish it like a, like a, um, like a bait fish. They'll reel it fast, let it fall back down to the bottom. So with this type of setup, you're using this one to just kind of just inching it right. along the bottom, fishing it more tr this like how more we would traditionally well. fish a, what we call a jig. What we right. think of. Okay. So this would be more for your craw than, you know, than the, and bucktail is how I would, I would fish it more that way. Gotcha. Because that was the white and the red and it's looking like a bleeding bait fish. And so that's when I would, I might throw a trailer on if I do, it's just going to be a fluke. Uh, and then I'll work it like that sort of a bait fish. But for okay. one of these, I'm going slow on the bottom. So with that one right there, with that black and chartreuse, you would, you th that one, you would put what type of trailer on there? I actually have one sitting right here. And so I normally will throw eighth to a quarter ounce football through the winter with these. And this okay. is the trailer that I use. It's just the little net bait pocket chunk. Okay. Gotcha. The mini one. And it's perfect. All you're seeing come out are the claws. It's the perfect little compact presentation to go after a small mouth with something that's going to stick out to them. Not saying you won't catch large mouth on it. You definitely will. I've caught plenty of big large mouth on a black and chartreuse hair jig, but gotcha. I've certainly caught more small mouth on it than anything else. Okay. All right. Hey, sounds good. All right. So Jason says very informative. All right. So Jason, you have to come back and give us some results now. Jason is a member of the money team. So Jason, in the comments, let us what what particular style of fishing do you normally do? So you had the the question was what was the lake that he mentioned in there? Let me just see. Um, Great Lakes. I don't I don't know. If right. Yeah. So Great Lakes. And so normally, I mean, when I hear that, I'm thinking offshore definitely. So what what uh, depth of water do you normally fish? And obviously, it looks like you're going after Smalley. So. That's what you said. Big football smallies is what you'll be targeting. All right. So that just kind of gives us a say that again. I'm, I'm guessing that's pretty deep or deep. Great Lakes area, small mouth using a heavy football. I'm guessing he's probably 30 plus feet. Gotcha. Um, and I would still do the same thing. But in that case, I would use like a half ounce and let it rock it through because realistically, I mean, it's going to take you 10 minutes to get to the bottom otherwise. Um, yeah. But put it out there where you know they are. Okay. All right. Gotcha. And what is your um like if someone wanted to reach out to you to you know to to get any of these the uh, products that you're going to be showing like specifically that jig because showing that one that's something that kind of looks unique. I mean I'm not a I don't fish the Great Lakes but to me if I saw that and listening to how you're saying I'd definitely be wanting something like that to try out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how would so they? How would they find out about your products and stuff like that? Normally, I'd send you to uh, normally I'd send you to the website. However, we're under construction. Uh, I can still send you to the website. Just know that it's not going to have everything. It's not very user friendly. We should have the new website up and running January first. But until then, um, feel free to just message me on Instagram. Okay, and what's your Instagram? It's just at RPM Jigs. At RPM Jigs. All right, there you go, guys. At RPM Jigs. I know somebody was asking that question in the comment section, so I just wanted to make sure I answered that for them. All right, yeah. so, man, I see a few yeah, more guys. It's rpmjigs.com. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not user-friendly because I am not very technically inclined. Gotcha. Uh, I do have somebody who is helping me with all of that right now. Um, he's actually, he he's on. He commented earlier. Uh, he's the one that uh, said I got Oh, here. gotcha. <laughs> okay, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, I got some Pennsylvania soon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all right. But okay. uh, we should have that up and running soon. But feel free to go to the website until then. Um, but like I said, it's not going to be as robust. Certainly going to have more colors available. If you go to Instagram, you'll see more of what I have available. And then, you know, if there's anything that I don't have and you want to see, just let me know. There's a good chance I have it. I have probably five or 600 jigs just littering my office i may or may not have been taking pictures today yeah. 
All right, uh, and I'm just gonna zoom because this, um, if you want to jot this, I mean, you already may have already planned to answer some of these, but I just want to say this real quick. So, some uh, team zipper lip says, Do you use silicone or live in rubber? Um, sonar five says silicone, round or flat. And let's see who else we have. Fish says, Colin, tell Alex someone wants more swim jigs. All right, let me see. Yeah, let's start coming. <laughs> All right, then double H, out, double H outdoors. Let me see. Stroke that three quarter ounce. So he's offshore. All right. <clears throat> uh oh, uh oh. All right. Team Zipper Lips at Sooner Five. Great minds think alike. All right. Harry says, favorite color for the Tennessee chain of lakes. All right. So, yeah. Uh oh. Wow. Now that one. I won a tournament on Chickamauga with this color. Not a single fish came on anything else for me. This yeah, has been absolutely doing it for me in the lakes, in the river systems. This one. All right. So you know how some things are made to catch fishermen? <laughs> now, that color right there looks nice. Now, I can see how that can catch some fishermen. But, I mean, you're saying you're getting results on it, too. So, I mean, what, what color trailer would you pair that up with? So, and, and this is where, you know, the this is all designed to catch fishermen comes in. So I'm going to run one or two, one of two trailers on this color wise. I mean, stylistically, I may use a myriad of different trailers depending on, you know, what's going on. Green pumpkin, always a good choice. I mean, green pumpkin takes on the color of whatever's around it. And that's, that's the thing. You don't need a million different trailers in your bag. Yeah. Can you hold that one? Can you hold that? Well, that one that you just held up. Hold that one, that other one, the one you just put down. Hold that one up next to the uh, the jig that you were just talking about from Chickamauga. So this would be a perfect match. There we go. Yeah, there we go. That, that's the Alabama crop. Now, I will say this. I fished Chickamauga. I had this trailer. I had this trailer. This is the one. All right. Crazy oh, thing. I got you. You would think. Perfect match, right? <laughs> right. It's the green pumpkin that did it for me. Uh and it's wild because, you know, that other trailer does, it matches it perfectly. I was so excited to buy them because first off, I love that style trailer and they had it in the color that matches my favorite jig. Done. What kind of jig head was on that, that, uh, the jig you just held up? Was that so an this, Archie head jig on there? Cause I mean, I mean, it looks like a. So that guy. one is a, uh, Sort of a hybrid, I guess. Uh, it can be used as one of two things. It can either be a swim jig. It can be used as a uh, flipping jig. Anything okay. Hold it a little closer to the camera again. Because, yeah, that one is a little different. Yeah. And turn it sideways. Okay. Okay. I see what you did. Okay. I see what you did on that one. So I nice. leave the eyes off that one. And reason being, those two jigs are very similar stylistically with that point. So they can get down through everything. While I do have, you know, those themselves, I personally, I use swim jigs to flip with a lot or punch when I'm not like punching through mats. I'm usually using a uh, punch rig and I use this and then, you know, have a you know, four aught, five aught EWG hook on the end of it to get through yeah. the heavier mats. Um, but, and, and I'm glad somebody earlier on said that they love swimming swim jigs through brush and things like that. Right. So big, so huge. How many times, you know, ha have you had a swim jig pop off of a branch and just get crushed, bringing it through some brush that the other five people you're fishing with, they wouldn't even touch it. They would never think about throwing something in there. <laughs> in reality, there's a 10 pounder down there somewhere. And if you don't right. throw a brush... It's not coming for you. Gotcha. Hey, I mean, you have to make it happen. That's why Sonar 5 was saying he tied on 30. He said he got 30 ready. I mean, right. I, have, I have, at any point in time, I've got 100 plus jigs on the boat. Gotcha. Just because, you know, if, if I get hung up in a spot that looks really, really juicy, I don't want to go over there and mess up the spot. Right, Especially exactly. I know there's fish there. I know they're biting, and I know there's a few more there that I can pull out. I'll try everything to get my jig back. And it's a little different for me that I, you know, being that I make them. However, I would rather pop that off and get that fish that's been hanging down there. Right. Yeah, definitely. All right. So let me, let me just uh, check one or two more questions real quick. All right. So Jason did reply, he says 20 to 25 foot of water is what he's fishing out there. I usually use black and blue PB and J 
and white with char chartreuse. Black and chartreuse is probably the ticket for sure. All right. So that's he was talking about the uh, the Great Lakes. All right, then Joseph. All right, we have another member of the money team checking in. All right, so finally got the chat up. Great coverage, hard to beat and tied. All right, so your so how yeah how do you go about? Well, actually, hold on, let me just because I keep. I mean, we have some good questions, man. It's kind of hard to, to stay on track. I'll right, write so, them down and hit them hit them as we as we come back to. All right, right, okay. Let me just look through here real quick. I just want to definitely make sure I pulled up the money team guys, and then a few other people had some questions. Let's see. Okay, yeah, they're kind of chatting in there. Um, all right, so let let me just let's go ahead and get into a few uh, questions, and then we can kind of go back and forth in the chat again real quick. Hold on one second. Let me just pull this up. All right, so. Let's go ahead and get into a few questions that I mean, some of the guys that have been fishing for a while, they may have these same questions, but definitely this will help out people that are just looking into getting into jig fishing. Um, for me, I would say jig fishing for somebody that's just getting into it. It will help you be known as the person that catches big fish. You may not catch a lot of numbers. In some instances you can, but you would definitely be known as that person to look out for whenever you show up on the scene and people are like, well, what's your favorite type of fishing? Somebody may say crankbait. Somebody says, you know, hey, I like to drag a Carolina rig. If somebody says they fish a jig, they may not say something right offhand, but they're going to remember that. They're going to say, hey, I got to look out for that person right there. So um, let's just start off talking about this. What are the different types of jigs and when to use them? And just kind of show some examples. I know you had a few different jig heads. So what are the different types of jigs and when to use them? So there are so many different types of jigs out there that I could get lost on that for hours. So gotcha. <laughs> break it down to like the main seven or eight styles that you're exactly. going to do um, along the way. Um, and it's, a, you know what, I'm not, I'm going to go backwards from where I'd kind of started because this is really where I should start. I'm going to start with the ball head. I'm going to start with the jig that made it all happen. This is, you know, your standard head ball head. That's what your dad fished. That's what your granddad fished. That's what somebody years ago went, Oh, this split shot. I bet we could just put it right on the end of this hook. And I should really look up the, uh, history on that because I wonder if that's actually what happened. And if it is, I doubt anybody's going to admit to that, but that's what I want to know. Um, anyway, it's ball head is a versatile jig. It's versatile because it was never geared to be anything specific. It was just to get something to the bottom. You can use this through structure. You can use it through brush. You can use it shallow. You can use it deep. There are so many applications for this jig because it was just what it was originally meant to be. I personally, I will throw this anywhere. I, I have them all the way from, I think, down to an eighth of an ounce through a full ounce that are in my box because I can use them anywhere that I go. You know, and yeah, people see this and think like, oh, well, that's just a ball head. That's just this. That's just that. Because we've gotten so many different styles of jigs that have come around through the years that it's just boring, right? You know, oh, the ball head jig, it's just boring. When, when in actuality, this is, this is a killer in your arsenal. It, it has the components of a football jig in that that round head keeps you from getting hung up on a bunch of different things. It keeps you from turning over your jig. You can swim it through the water. This isn't going to cause you a whole bunch of drag like you would see from an arky head or you know a punch head it's going to come through the water not as easily as a swim head of course because that's meant to come through the water that way but it'll swim it'll do anything you want it'll give you those long drags on the bottom it'll give you hops it'll give you big rip let it drop down there are so many applications for this one i mean it, it, it covers everything but it's missed a lot simply because, oh, it's old school. Gotcha. So as far as the type of structure that you would uh, fish that uh, football head, is that the football head or is that just the regular no, ball? This is, this is just the round head. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So that round head. Okay. So that one's kind of just, the, it's, it's, I guess, a universal type. It's not a yeah. specific, like when you get into specifics. Okay. I got you. I got you. 
So I wanted to start with that one because it is a really good overall. And if any of you guys, you know, have something specific that you use a ball head for, I'd love to know, you know, I'm, I make jigs. I'm not going to sit here and tell you, Oh, I know everything. I'm perfect. You can't be any better than me. I, I'm not foolish enough to think that. So if anybody right. has, you know, an application for a ball jig that they've come across somewhere along the way, I would love to hear it. I mean, just let me know. Cause yeah. And so for me, uh, one of the main techniques that I use is throwing my shaky head. I mean, in my videos, the majority of the fish that the guys see me catching are going to be on a, on a shaky head, depending on the lake that I'm on and what I'm targeting. But a lot of times I'm going to have that shaky head ready and the, uh, it has a long shank hook on it. I can't remember the exact, uh, manufacturer of the ones that i use but it has a very long shank hook on it and i've tried some different i've actually tried to tie a jig <laughs> using my shaky head jig before because my hookup ratio is just it's great with those once i get a fish on that i mean i'm flipping out just about all of them unless they're too big you know what i mean because i'm not worried about those fish coming off once i get that that hook set in them um and so for me i would like to fish and i don't think i even have any jigs with just a, a ball, a, you know, just that ball jig like that. But um, yeah, I mean, that would be something that I'd be interested in seeing more of. And then especially if you could do those with that long shank hook. So maybe that's something else. I'll shoot a picture of it to, to you. And then, you know, we can get into that. All right. So you said the ball head jig, that was your, the first, the first one. And then what else do you have? So uh, I'm not really going in any particular order here. Right. Like, there's importance. Just kind of walking through each one bladed, you know, pops up next. You know, I mean, everybody has a bladed jig in their tackle box somewhere along the way. Everybody has a chatterbait. Everybody may or may not have a jackhammer, $16 a pop, who knows. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I will fish a chatterbait through the summertime at night, all night. Gotcha. I mean, the big thing that this does that, you know, you're not going to get from a swim jig is the vibrations that it puts out. You can get this out there and draw fish in from 50 feet away just by hearing the vibration by what's going on, you know, in, under the water. We don't okay. hear obviously being above the water, but if you were to put your head in the water and I've done this because I was curious, <laughs> friend of mine's pool, I was like, do me a favor, throw this under the water. It was so loud. I was at the wow. other end of the pool and I could hear it perfectly. Gotcha. Uh, so it's, it's going to draw them in in the nighttime or murky water, you know, anywhere else that you're going to rely on a vibration to draw a fish in. This is huge. It's also a deep water killer. Anywhere that you're going to throw, you know, something that has a tight action, lipless, anything like that. Okay. Another incredible option. This is going to sink so much faster than just about anything else that you throw. And when you're getting in the deep water, that's important. You can rip it up and let it let it drop just like you would do if you were yo-yoing your lipless. You can pull it through. You can drag it along the bottom. You can hop okay. it. You can work this any way you want. There are so many different retrieves that can be done with this that you don't really think about because oftentimes when you're looking at one of these, it's like, oh, okay, so I swim that, right? I mean, right. I swim and then pause it or you know, maybe I'll pop it a little bit here and there. When in reality... You can run it just like you would this jig right here, sitting on the bottom, popping it. And this blade is going to make it 10 times louder. And you're still able to give them that presentation that isn't moving because you never know what a fish is going to want. They may need that loud noise mm -hmm. without the action. They may not be a reaction fish. They may not be in the spot that they want to move, especially this time of year. I mean, I know when I'm outside, I don't want to move. It's cold. Right. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing with those, I've actually used those skipping docks before because they skip real, they skip very well under docks. Yeah. So, so yeah. So that's another thing with that swim jig. All right. So we have the ball jig, the swim jig, and what else you got? Oh man, we got swim. Oh yeah. We talked about swim. We got football. Football is a good one. So um, wait a second. So the swim jig, we didn't do that one yet. We didn't talk about the swim jig. Let's hit the swim jig. So swim jigs, you can use a million different ways. Uh, the, the biggest way that everybody sees them used is cast and retrieve, cast and retrieve, right. and retrieve. Great way to use them. They are a phenomenal search bait. If you're out there and, you know, just trying to figure out where the fish are, if you're in a tournament trying to put together a pattern and you just need to figure out where they are right here, 
You can burn this through anything. A lot of people just want to cast it in open water or cast it in safe places or right. you know, in springtime, like, oh, let me bust beds with it. That's all well and good. <laughs> but again, and I can't remember who it was that said it, this is dangerous in structure. This is dangerous under a dock. This is dangerous in any place that you would maybe lose it. This right here is huge. I'm pushing right here in the amount that it's taking to move that just that much is a lot. Now, when your fish is hitting it, it's hitting there. So it's able to push that down. Right. But that's stout weed guard. And most jigs are going to have a stout enough weed guard for you to be able to put it in those places that you might not get something else back from. That's why these are huge. You can use them open water put them under docks, put them in structure, put them anywhere that you want. And there's not just one way to retrieve it. Retrieve it straight. That's a, that's a great way to do it. If I'm retrieving it straight, I'm throwing it with a paddle tail all day long. Gotcha. Okay. If I'm, if I'm looking to, you know, bounce it off the bottom, like a bait fish that's feeding, I'll probably throw like a, a bug on it rigged sideways, something like that. Um, you can also, you know, rig it up with a bug like that and just kind of bounce it as it swims through the water and it looks like a really nice bait fish. There's more to be done with a swim jig than just cast and retrieve, cast and retrieve. Right. Okay. All right. So we got the swim jig, the ball jig. What was the other one that we did? The, the, um, bladed, bladed jig. Okay. So what else we got? What else are we looking at? We got footballs. Another, another good one that, uh, you know, a lot of people don't really understand, you know, what's the best way to use a football there's there's a million ways to use it just like there's a million ways to use any jig there's no wrong way there's no right way there are more effective ways the uh, reason the football jig is so effective is that head that head as it comes through the water it keeps that jig from turning over it keeps your your whole thing your whole presentation from going the wrong way because generally speaking where are you throwing a football in the rocks right the rocks and you're like Oh, I've got this swim jig on, tied on. Forget that. Let me put this football on and drag it through the rocks. It's That's where it excels, truly. You can use it anywhere, just like any jig. Any jig can be used for any application. It's all about how you use it. Certain ones right. are more effective than others. This will have much less a chance of getting hung up in those rocks. The smooth sides right there keep it from getting hung in crevices, you know, it lets it pop out in different places. That's why when you're using a football jig and you feel like, Oh, I'm hung up on something. Give it a good little pop. Don't, don't bow and arrow it yet. Give it a good pop because there's a good chance. It's just going to rip right out of the corner there. Cause this is probably what's stuck. Yeah. And so hold that one ne right next to that uh, round, the round one and just put them closer to the camera just so the guys can see the difference between those two. That, mm -hmm. that Yeah. That first one, that round head jig. Yeah. yeah, there you go. So, yeah, so basically that football, it looks like a football. It has a nice oval shape to it, guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and you know, you see a lot of different people that are coming out with different, you know, football head styles and everything. Think, think about the reason for a football head. Think about why, you know, we use them. Think about when we use them, where we use them. And then think about the different things that you're seeing people put into the design of a football head. You're giving it more cracks and crevices. You're making it get stuck instead of the reason for a football jig. Right. However, there's one that I've seen and, uh, you know, it's, it's taken me a while to go, all right, fine. I'll give them credit. Um, <laughs> Beast Coast has a football jig that I actually like that's outside of the standard. Uh, it's the dozer. And the reason I like it, one of the, you know, one of the best retrieves for a football jig is just drag it along the bottom. Right. Exactly. As, as it drags along the bottom, you know, you're, you're crawling along the way there. You've got your trailer here. When you look at a crawfish, naturally, they're just crawling along. They're not. Pew, pew, pew. Right. That's fleeing. That's when they're running. And that's why your jigs, you know, outside of a football jig, when they land, they land up like this. So your claws are up in the air and they're in the defense position. With a football jig, you're mimicking just a crawfish crawling along the bottom. Okay. Crawfish hitting rocks. That's where they're hanging out. That's why we throw those there. And that it's huge. Not to say don't pop it at all. You absolutely should. Crawl it a little bit and you know, as you're pulling, give it a good pop or two as you're pulling it in, just in case there's any fish that haven't seen it, haven't heard it, and that pops up and you get your little plume of smoke or not smoke, your little plume of dirt. Right. 
and then they see it fall. Um, and yeah. the East Coast has their dozer head, and what it does is it just throws up more dirt as you drag along. Yeah, I think I've seen seen that before. Okay, all right. So we have the ball jig, the swim jig, the bladed jig, the football jig, and did I say swim jig already? Yeah, we got swim all jig, right. and then casting. What's that mean? I'm trying to think of the word I'm looking for. Casting structure. Source. Right, kind of like that archie head jig. It's it's the Arky style head, gotcha. and it's it's the casting, it's the uh, structure jig. And I don't, honestly, it's a great pitching jig. It is a great punching jig if you're using the right weight. You know, if you throw a quarter ounce Arky jig, you're not going to punch through anything. Right. But exactly. if you're you know, half ounce and up, you absolutely can. I've I've pulled in some phenomenal fish flipping. You know, just heavy cover with one of these. Uh, but these, it's an all-purpose jig. You can do just about anything with it. If you look at the head and you look at, you know, here, I'll pull up the swim jig again. And if you, if you look at the bottom of it is what I'm talking about here. I mean, obviously the, you know, the profile is going to be a little bit different there. Right. The bottoms are both flat and that's to help them pop up and over anything that they might run into. So it's another good one that you, you can swim. You can flip it, you can pitch it, you can cast it into open water, you can run it through any bit okay. of structure. Skipping, as far as skipping, oh, I will pick up an Arky first thing. That'll be <laughs> right. the first thing I skip because, like, it, it's nuts. I, I, the first time I ever skipped one was one that I made, and I saw the jig head style and didn't like it at first. And then I fished with it the first time and went, I love it. Right. <laughs> like skipped up under a dock and it was just like, it kept going. And if anybody has ever been to Nashville, there's like a little river walk right mm -hmm. out downtown. And I was right there and I skipped up under the little area there and it goes back yeah. probably 30 feet. And I heard my jig hit the concrete on the other side. Hey, that's like, always a good, that's a oh. good sign right there. <laughs> I'm, I'm sold. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's amazing. And, you know, the retrieve that you kind of want to do with it is like a lift drop, some slight pops, you know, anything that, you know, you're going to kick up some dirt with anything that if you're stuck in some grass or anything, you're just going to rip it right out. Right. Uh, it's a really good jig for all of those. Uh, okay. The other one, the other one, and I didn't actually tie this up. And the reason that I didn't is because I wanted you guys to kind of get a look at what the, what the punch rig itself looks like. So gotcha. Right off the bat bullet. You know, it's going to cut right down. Sorry, I've never done this before, so I apologize. I got you. Hey, it's working. Uh, we can see it. <laughs> uh, that bullet there, and it, it looks very similar to the War Eagle spinnerhead. Um, that bullet there, you know, usually when you're throwing a, a, a punch rig, it's three quarters plus ounces. Don't ask me why. Poor okay. one. That was eight ounces. Right. But it's heavy duty, and it's meant to get down through those mats. So, um, for example, Chickamauga, and I say that one just because everybody knows Chickamauga. Mm -hmm. Chickamauga has thick, thick grass. And right, right. Like to the point that, I mean, it's great frog fishing, but um, that's about it, right? Okay. Till you right. start throwing those heavy duty punch rigs that just cut right down through it. So it, it's similar to a lot of the pitching and everything else that you're using, but you're just casting that into places that nothing else would get through. And, and gotcha. the reason that I do them like this instead of, you know, in a full pitching jig is it allows me to create, you know, my own hardware for it. So I'm running a four or five odd EWG hook. Mm -hmm. So as it goes down, it doesn't matter what a weed guard's doing. That hook tip is buried in that plastic until something bites it. So right. when, when you're punching down through all of that heavy, heavy stuff, that's what I prefer to use. And it's, okay. I mean, and with those, it's, they're, they're super, super quick. You're punching it down in through there, giving it two, three, four pops, reel back in, go again. Gotcha. All you, right. can't, you just can't pull that through. Yeah, yeah. exactly. All right, then, guys. All right. So those are the different types of jigs that we're kind of going over for this evening. And man, we've been rolling. Time flies when you're having fun. So I know we talked about doing the how would you fish it. I have a few other questions that I wanted to get into. But I guess since we've gone over the different types of jig styles that we can use, I guess we can go ahead and get into the how would you fish it segment. And basically what that is, is I will bring up a video clip. And most of the time, guys, I bring that up of, 
a clip of whenever I was out on the water myself, but I found a, some, something a little different. I'm, go, I'm going to pull up some footage, and this is going to be using the electronics as usual, and we're going to kind of incorporate how would you fish it whenever you see the, the type of structure that I'm going to pull up. And actually, hold on just a second. Let me find that clip. I had it up on my screen, queued and ready to go. And I'm just going to stop my video for like a half second. I okay. Don't okay. Do this. All right. No problem. No problem. I'll bring you right back up whenever you are ready. Let me just drop this down. Hold on one second. All right. Hold on one second. Okay, guys. Let me just, what I'm going to do now is just share my screen and pull up this footage so that you guys can see exactly what we're going to be talking about with the how would you fish a segment just bear with me one second all right just have to share the screen uh, all right just bear with me guys just give me a second I just have to because I had another foul. And also the other thing that we were going to get into was those crawl colors. But let me just pull this up real quick so we can take care of the how would you fish it segment. All right, here we go. All right, there we go. All right. So let me just drop this over real quick. See how I can get the screen set up for everybody. I think that might work right here. All right. All right. So, Colin, you can see the screen. OK. Yeah. All right. All right. So, guys, basically what we're going to do is take a look at a, um, a video clip and in the comments, make sure you guys get active in the comment section. And also the guys that are here from the money team, I definitely want to see you guys getting active in the comments, letting me know what you see on the screen, what you would use to fish it and why you're choosing those baits. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and take a look at the video clip. And we will go from there. All right, here we go, guys. What a brush pile looks like beneath your boat. And if you take a look at this, here's the bottom of Lake Eufaula right here. And then you'll see that brush pile with the branches coming out with a pile of bait above it with the bass beneath it. But the other side of this is a lot of the technology that these guys are using. Ronnie, let's go to what's called Mega 360. And here's what it is. You see the boat in the center, okay? with this 60 foot radius, it's basically underwater sonar to show you. Right here, you would wanna make that cast. Here's your brush pile off to about two o'clock and you see that brush pile at about 30 feet from your boat. So you basically make a cast at two o'clock and you will come right through that brush pile. And we said this enough is it's a law of average. If you can hit 50 of those a day and trust me when I say this, there are tens of thousands of, of planted brush piles in this lake. If you can hit as many as possible, make three to five casts to these brush piles throughout the day, somewhere you will catch five big ones. And they say, oh, that looks good, guys. Look at that. That is the 360. That is a very big brush pile. All right, man. Now, hey, have you fished Lake follow before? I haven't, but I, uh, I mean, just looking at that, I've, I've, I've got ideas. That's, uh... <laughs> Man, listen, I fish Lake Eufaula. Had a great time on that lake. And what he just showed on that screen, I saw a lot of those. On my Friday that I went out there and pre-fished, I brought in about 15 pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, was, I called a little bit, brought in about 15 pounds. Day one of the tournament. Came in with about 1774. Leg you follow. All right. Fishing that type of structure right there. And day two, which was that Sunday, I mean, things slowed down a little bit, but I was still able to get about 12 something pounds. So just taking a look at that structure again, guys. So that is the Mega 360. And as you can see, if you look down over in the bottom right corner, the range he has that set out to 60 feet. So that circumference of that circle is 60 feet. They're sitting in 18 feet of water. You see the water temps are around 82 degrees. So, hey, it's a, it's a little bit different time of the year than it is from right now. Um, so I guess you guys can keep that in mind, too. But with that 360, you see that big brush pile. That is a very, very big brush pile, guys. And that is sitting off, like he said, to that 2 o'clock section. 
Um, so, all right, guys, get active down in the comments. You see what you what what you're working with right there. We're fishing a very big um, brush pile, and I mean, you can see the tree roots, see the branches and everything on there. Not sure if that is something that just occurred naturally. It may have, but um, sometimes a lot of guys they get out there and they put this type of structure out there on the water so that they can come back and fish it later. So, based on what you're seeing, if you're familiar with fishing that 360. Put in the comments, how would you fish that? Let me just go back just a little bit. How would you fish that? What lure would you use and why would you pick that? And then, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Let's see. So what do you think, Colin? How would you fish that? What would you be throwing out there? And, you know, why are you picking that that particular lure? Hang on. I got to It's sitting here somewhere. I know it is. All right. Of course, it's not. So I'm uh, <laughs> getting ready to release buzz baits too, but... Um, <clears throat> so that water temperature is pretty high. It's probably right. mid to late summer. I'm, I'm guessing. Right. Uh, so you're, you're looking at pretty lethargic fish. And I, I mean, I'm torn. I, I have a couple different things that I would do. I'd certainly probably start with either a buzz bait or one of these. And I know it's not a jig. Oh, don't go ahead and don't hate me. All right. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Reason being, uh, that's going to let me know, you know, how aggressive are they being at that point in time? Plus, mm -hmm. if they're not that aggressive, you know, a buzz bait is a reaction bait. It's there to make them mad. So right. louder than my, my buzz baits that I throw, like they're the squeakiest, loudest. Like if it was your car, it would be in the, it would, it would be at the dump that's going to get them riled up. Same thing with that glide bait. Um, glide bait is a really good search bait to mm -hmm. you know, what's following is something following. Is it following aggressively? Is it just curious? You know, what are we, what are we looking at? And then, you know, dependent that's, that's hot water. And so this is going to be an interesting and probably somewhat unpopular opinion color wise for that time of year mm -hmm. for it. And I, I can, I can speak to it. I might throw this. It's a little, it's a little oh, net jig. Okay. Little, and it's uh, the color is called Dragon's Breath. It's that bright red. So when when the water temperatures start getting into the 80s, and the and this is the other reason I'm throwing it, is that's an EWG. Oh hook. yeah. Okay. Um, I can throw that down there. I don't have to worry about it getting hung up in any of that. Right. I'm throwing that because once the temperatures hit. 80 plus degrees those crawfish are getting a lot of vitamin a and that is it vitamin a i think it is don't quote me on that it's one of the vitamins um, that is actually turning them red so we all fish red in the springtime because we all know craws are molting that's what the fish are eating at the time mm -hmm. it sticks through that nasty springtime water that we have craws don't actually turn red until the end of summer so there's a good chance I'm throwing something like that because they haven't seen this since the springtime from an angler's perspective. And that gotcha. giant ball of bait could go one of two ways. This right here, this could absolutely wreck them. It could also just be the same thing that they're seeing all day. Right. There's a school of bait fish right there that clearly aren't too terrified of the fish that are under there or they wouldn't be hanging out there. Now the, the other side of it is throw this, put it on the bottom, put something that they're not used to seeing, you know, artificially. And then a little, little outside of what they're used to seeing from those bait fish that are sitting right there, because again, lethargic bass, they're sitting at the bottom and bash or bash bass are ambush predators. Right. They're not, they're not out hunting. They're not pike. They're not musky. They're not things that are, you know, they have that streamlined vision so they can <laughs> All right, so the, the guys are in here, they're coming back with some interesting uh with some interesting answers to this one. But let me go ahead and get into what I would do. So pretty much I have fished Lake Eufaula, and uh I guess I'll stick to what worked for me on that day where I caught around 40 something pounds of fish in those three days. I mean, that's and, solid. Oh, all right, nice. so basically what I did is I stuck with a shaky head and I was throwing a magnum shaky head worm. And that color of that jig, could you hold that jig up again that you just held up? That um, one with the brown, yeah, that one right there. So what I would do is I would I would throw that shaky head 
or I would go to something like that jig, Texas rig, just somewhere in that family, the shaky head jig, Texas rig. And I would throw something that has that green pumpkin look to it and not as much as of that red in there. And basically that was a ticket for me. I was throwing green pumpkin. I had a little bit of chartreuse dipped on there because I like putting that dye on mine. And then I, I, there you go. I, well, I use JJ's because it has that garlic scent on it also. And I think that does too. But um, then I tipped it off with that blood red. So I had that red in it. I had the green pumpkin and I had that chartreuse, something that would pop in the, in the water. And that's what worked for me. And I would throw that out there and just kind of, and that was basically that ball head style. So I was able to work that through real slow and I could feel it ticking off of all of those branches and everything as it was hitting it. And I actually, guys, if you search money bass, you follow, then you should see it's, I think it's like uh, three separate videos. You'll see that's basically what I was doing. I'm not explaining all of that in the video itself. It was turn, you know, it was tournament time and I'm competing against those guys. So I'm giving you a little bit of the info during the during the tournament. But for the guys that are here tonight, you're getting a little more inside info. So that's pretty much what I was doing. And that's how I would fish it. I would go straight in there. And attack it with those slow moving baits make um just a few casts and also with that live imaging i mean you're gonna see you know kind of what's going on in there at the time i did not have live imaging i was just using my mega 360. so what you're seeing on the screen uh, let me just pull that back up real quick so what you're seeing that they're showing you is kind of what i was seeing at the time and that's how i was fishing it all right so let's go ahead and take a look and see what some of the guys are saying in the uh live stream let me just go ahead and pull us back up here real quick all right so all right so we have let me see who is this yeek a a signature hook set okay i guess that is a sound that you make whenever you get a real good hook set. all right he says good stuff all right so team zipper lip says jerk bait all right so he's going with the tried and true jerk bait i wonder what's making you say jerk bait could it be uh what is that what's his name dustin connell is that his name the guy that fished the M mlf with uh jacob wheeler and mark daniels jr he was out there tearing them up on you follow um fishing a jerk bait and that was right before I actually picked up my live imaging. And I was like, man, I wish I had live images so I could go out there and try to duplicate whatever it was that they were doing. All right. So he says the jerk bait. So, yeah, obviously we know that one works if anybody has seen the results that they got whenever they were out there fishing. All right. So, Michael, the 10, 10, 13 guy says I would fish a half ounce Arky jig. I would swim it and tick the top of the limbs, then I would go deeper. All right, there we go. So that's what we're talking about tonight, guys. So the thing that you guys have, have found from the different styles of these jigs that we went over a little earlier, I mean, you can pretty much attack this lake and have all jigs tied on. I mean, you just have to know how to fish those different techniques based on the type of jig that you have uh, tied on. All right, then we have Sonar 5. He's another heavy hitter. He says, Jake Lake, you follow Alabama, big fish, and big gators. Oh, that is right. Because so when I brought out the bait, got it. <laughs> Say that again. So don't throw the glide bait. Got it. Well, I mean, it just depends. You just want to keep it away from those gators. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, they do have some big ones. I and actually, guys, when I was out there on Lake Eufaula, I went up, uh, I headed north. So when you come out from Lake Point, you hook a strong right and go up towards that shallower water where there's coves and everything up there. So I'm not sure what, I'm, it may have been like closer to the summertime because the, the alligators, they were out. So I go into this cove and it's kind of kind of um, sh shallow, you know what I mean? It's not really a big cove. So I go back there and I'm fishing and I see, I didn't notice it at first, but it is a big alligator. I mean, the thing had to be, I'd say at least 11, 10 to 15 feet, somewhere around in there. The thing was big. So I go off into this cove and I'm fishing and I'm looking at this gator like, uh, we're cool, right? Because I'm just fishing. You're just over there doing your thing. I'm over here doing my thing. So I, I'm heading towards it a little bit, but I'm not planning on getting that close. This thing lifts his head up and turns and just looks directly at me. It just lifts his head up real fast and turns, looks at me and starts going into the water and its head stays above water, and then it slowly sinks under the water. Man, I hopped off from the front of that boat so fast <laughs> and turned the key, 
and I hit that. I hit the boat in reverse. I don't. I man, I was like that thing can easily jump on the boat if it wanted to. I did not know its intentions, <laughs> and I did not want to find out. So I threw that thing in reverse. And again, I'm in a small cove. There was only one way out of this little cove. So I'm backing up, and I. I mean, it's like something off of the Dukes of Hazard or something. I'm just going backwards, and when it spins around, the front spins around, and I punch it in and forward and not take off out of there so yeah lake you follow does have those gators in there all right but yeah kind of kind of brought back some memories right there with that comment <laughs> so yeah you got to watch out for those gators when you go to lake you follow all right then we have david easy d maddox says half ounce archie jig does it all my choice all right so there we go so we got some jig fishermen in here if you know how to work those jigs then yeah you're good all right delta bass says with water temp they will be active I'd start, uh, let's see, ticking the top of the brush towel, brush pile with a crankbait, then structure jig and shaky head last. All right. So to me, I think you're living kind of dangerously throwing that crankbait in there because let's say that that eight or nine pounder is sitting in there waiting on you <laughs> and you're like, hey, I want to just go ahead and tick those branches. But you tick, tick, stick. And you're like, uh oh. Now, I know there's some guys out there that can actually burn their crankbaits and they can they can bounce them off of there. But to me, I'm kind of skittish with that right there, because if you get that hung up and you have to go in there and get it, because maybe that's one of those 10, 15, 30 dollar <laughs> crankbaits, you're not going to break that thing off. But that nine pound is going to be like, ah, let me just swim off and I'll come back later. Whenever money bass come through here with that jig. <laughs> All right, so that's a good one, Delta Bass. All right, my opinion says I might just drop a 10-inch old monster worm in the in their Texas rig. Those work. Those definitely work. All right, then Italian Bass Master 14 says I'm flipping a Cinco. All right, so, yeah, those Cinco's, those will work in there, too. So you're going at it a little, you know, the nets, trying to finesse them out of there. All right, and, and whenever, I, whenever I'm on... You follow, I throw my Cinco and I, I just throw that straight braid. I have, I think, like 30 pound braid or something on there because I, I fish that on the grass edges also. But yeah, so that's that's a good combo right there. All right, then Team Zipper Lip says, I'm changing to shallow to a, wait a second, I'm changing to a slow roll double willow leaf spinner bait bumping branches. All right, we all know that's a killer too. That's a killer one. That's a good one. All right, then Italian Bassmaster 14, 10 inch Mondo Worm. Wait a minute, you you double dipping off in here. Didn't you just say a flipping a Senko? All right, so he's. Well, I think the Mondo is a Senko. Oh, okay, it is. 10 inches. Oh, wow. Goodness gracious. Okay, <laughs> I was thinking that was more like an old Monster Worm. Okay, so he's throwing the a big Senko. I think I've seen those before now that you mentioned it. Go big or go home, right? You know? right? There we go. There we go. All right, then we have member of the money team stepping in. So Jason. All right, guys. And just so the guys know, the, the way that you can tell who are the members of the money team, or if you look right next to their name, there's like a little badge next to it. And it's like a little money bass logo. Those are the members of the money team. If anybody is interested in supporting the channel, becoming a member of the money team, just hit the join button down below. It'll give you some details about what it is to be a member of the money team and also guys the members of the money team i will need a way to reach out and get in contact with you because what we are going to do is have the members of the money team they're going to receive some of the jigs that we have been talking about tonight so colin at rpm jigs is going to make you some custom jigs that you can go out on the water you know catch some two three five nine pounders and then come back and report to us you know, how you like the jigs, what the action was. So we're going to put something together for you guys. So um, you guys, and actually, let me just put my Instagram. It's scrolling down across the bottom. Hold on one second. Let me make sure I put this down here. All right. So my Instagram, at official money bass. And then, Colin, yours was uh, at RPM jigs. Yes. Okay. At RPM jigs. So make sure you, the guys on the money team send a... Um, a message over to those Instagrams. And let me just take a look real quick because I think we just have like three guys that are in here from the money team real quick. Let me just take a look. So we have Jason, we have Joseph and we have, let me see, that may have been it. I think there was one other guy. Oh, and Mark E. Scott. So I think those are the guys. So make sure you guys reach out to me 
And if I did miss anybody, um, just reach out to me on Instagram and also reach out to Colin. Yeah, I think that was everybody. All right. So let me just find my place where we were at again. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Going through these comments. Let's see what else somebody has to say. Let's see. Delta Bass. I think I already got that one. Slipping the sinker. Okay, here we go. All right, so Jason says a slow rig. Okay, I got that one too, right? No, I didn't say that one. A rig. Oh, an A rig. Oh, an A rig. Slow tipping tops of brush. Second Texas rig right in the thick of it. Ah, he's being a little sneaky. So he's bringing up the A rig. But guess what? That A rig does work. Because I caught a 757 on Lake Eufaula throwing an A rig. That one right there won me the Mega Bass. Yes, so I won a Mega Bass pot throwing the A rig, but it was a different time of the year. It was cold, the colder months. I think it was in February. And I was working that through a lily pad, through lily pad stems. They did not even have the tops on it. And you, you may ask, how was I actually working an A rig through lily pads? Hey guys, I did it. I was getting stuck a lot, but I wanted that big fish and I got it. So yeah, so that A rig, that A rig does work on Lake You Follow. All right, and let's see. So Italian Bassmaster 14, I'm throwing a Texas rig uh, drop shot too. Okay, you're throwing that drop shot. Wait a minute, are you triple dipping Italian Bassmaster 14? He's throwing the Mondo worm, he's throwing the Drop shot, the Texas rig, and he's flipping the flip. Okay, but I forgot. The Mondo and the Cinco are the same thing. All right, so let's see. Let me see what else we have. Uh-oh, guys. We got Mako. Mako wants to hop in here and catch a fishy, too. He wants to catch a little fishy fish. Mako says, I would use an archy head jig with green pumpkin skirt and work it through the structure. There we go. Keeping, yes, sir. It, keeping it nice and simple. That's the way you do it. Pull up. Make those few casts and move on to the next one. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Fish uh, says, Colin, Alex told me he needs more of your wonderful swim jigs. <laughs> Somebody is on you about some swim jigs. <laughs> coming. All right. Let's see. Uh-oh. Then we have Joseph, member of the money team, stepping in. He says, throw the Duralast at him. Not the Duralast. Come on. That is Chicken Hawk sponsor. That's what Chicken Hawk likes to talk about. Okay, we have Rick Patterson. Yes, sir. All right, I think Rick Patterson is a member of the Patreon, so I have to double check. Um, Rick, if you are a member of the of the Money Team, I'm mean, the Patreon. Make sure you hit me up on Instagram. Also, it's down at the bottom at Official Money Bass. So you guys that are the um, part of the Money Team or the Patreon, make sure you send over um, a message over to me because we're going to be reaching out to you. All right, then we have Mako says, I would use the Archihead jig. Okay, I think I just got that one. All right, then we have, wait a second, did I read Rick Patterson? Didn't even read it. Let me read Rick Patterson's message. He says, shaky head and Texas rig worm. So, yes, those, those to me, I mean, that falls right in line with the way that I was saying that I would uh, attack that structure. All right, then we have Yeet, a signature. Wait a second, did I lose my spot? Hold on just a second, guys. Let me just double check. Uh-oh, guys. Look what we have. We have somebody stepping up that wants to go ahead and sponsor tonight's show. All right. All right, Jason. Really, really appreciate that. He is a member of the money team. And basically what I say each guys is for each live stream, the person that makes the highest super chat, super sticker or cash app is the sponsor of tonight's stream. And let me see. So the last live stream, they were kind of battling, battling back and forth a little bit. But Mark E. Scott, he was the one that that stepped up and he became the sponsor. I think his super chat was maybe about twenty dollars or so. You see his name scrolling across the bottom. Mark E. Scott. All right. Thank you, Mark, for sponsoring last uh, week's live stream. But tonight we have Jason stepping up saying, hold up, swole up. Let me just go ahead and bump you off of here because I want to be the star of tonight's show. So let's see. Let me go ahead and change this real quick. Just bear with me, guys. Doing a little work. All right. So we have Jason is the tonight sponsor of the live stream. All right. There we go. Strong scrolling down at the bottom. Special thank you so much to the sponsor of the live stream, Jason, the member of the money team. Really, really appreciate that. All right. And let me just find my place real quick. All right. Let's see. I think we had a few more guys that want to hop in and 
you know, think they can catch one of those fish out of the brush pile. Let's see what we have to what we, what else we have. All right. So, OK, Jason stepping in saying, did you get up on plane in reverse? Oh, man. Listen, I was trying to I, that 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 look on that gator's face. It definitely had bad intentions. God, I don't know if you have ever felt what it feels like to be looked at as a meal. I mean, literally a meal, not in a good way. I mean, <laughs> no. So, yes, I was trying to get on plane in reverse when that, whenever that gator was coming after me. All right. Then we have Italian Bassmaster 14 says, I've been using 50 pound braid and 25 pound floral leader when flipping wood and brush. Yep. So that'll work. That'll work. All right. Braid can snap off around wood. Right. And rocks. Yeah. So you want to be careful with that. All right. So Jeff Newell says from a year round jig man. Good info, fellas. East. Let me see. East Cobb Bass Club in the house. All right. All right. Really, really appreciate that. Oh, my goodness. Hold on just a second, guys. I think I just got some chills from we have. Oh, my goodness. Guys, we have a new sponsor of tonight's live stream. I mean, I don't know if anybody's going to top him, but Italian Bassmaster 14, he is kicking in with the comments. Yes, sir. And he is kicking in with the sponsorship of the live stream. So, Jason. He says, hey, man, you're doing good and all. Really appreciate the support. But Italian Bassmaster 14 says, hold up, swole up. I think I'm going to have to take this spot. So hold on, guys. Let me get in here and do a little bit of work. Really, really appreciate you taking the time to sponsor tonight's show. All right. So we have Jason that was in here. Really appreciate it. And really appreciate everybody for stopping in and just showing support for the channel. Man, you guys have been buying the merch. I got the new merch out for everybody that you guys are asking about with the money bass hats, the hoodies, the T-shirts, all that good stuff. Just really, really appreciate the support coming in from the channel. Let me go ahead and type this in here real quick. So we have Italian Ass Master. Ass. Just bear with me, guys. Just doing a little work. Bass Master 14, all right, has stepped up and is now the sponsor of tonight's live stream. Man, I mean, guys, I really, really appreciate that you guys are finding value in the information that we are putting out. I mean, I try to come with something new each week, something that would definitely benefit you guys. Whether it's the content, whether it's the merchandise that I may find, where I find discounts for you guys and put those links in the description. And also just sharing this information that is helping guys. I mean, we've been getting some good feedback. So anybody that has been following along with the channel for any length of time, you've seen the guys come back with the results that they have just got from some of the info from whether it's me sharing info, the guys in the, in the comments, my subscribers, we're all here to help each other out. Because in the end, we would rather somebody come back and tell us the, the success story that they had out on the water. Rather than, oh, man, you know, I was out there when me and my son went out. We weren't able to catch anything. Just a bad day. I mean, to me, it's a whole lot better when we're able to get in here and share this information. Even if we're competing against each other, I will be fishing the BFLs next year. But I'm still going to be in here providing information to my subscribers, my supporters, my members, everybody that is here to help each other out. Because we can't all get first place and we're not all going to always get first place. Hey, I'm just shooting to be in that top somewhere so whether it's me or one of you guys i mean to me coming back and hearing that success story it's all good it's all you know it's all a good thing but really really appreciate you italian bass master 14 for stepping in and supporting the channel and becoming tonight's sponsor of the live stream all right so let's see let's see kind of threw me off for a second i mean that that one got me that one got me all right so we have jason jason says i don't have an instagram i can barely use facebook <laughs> All right, so Jason, you're kind of like me. So let me think. Do you know how to use email? I mean, so I'm not good with Instagram and all that stuff either. A lot of times people send me a message. I don't know how to necessarily go and send somebody a message first, but if somebody messages me, I figure out a way to reply back <laughs> in a lot of cases, <laughs> but not all. So um, my email, if you want to send me an email, is moneybass404 at gmail.com moneybass404 at gmail.com all right jason please don't say you don't have an email try to work with work with me man work with me we're trying we're trying 
All right, so let's see. Let me just take a look and see who else we have hopping in. All right, let's see. I just wanted to just make sure I didn't miss any members of the money team real quick. All right, just bear with me, guys. Just trying to get my head back right, trying to get everything back together. All right, so uh, let's see. Okay, so and that's the other thing, guys. So we have Team Zipper Lips is talking to Rick. You from Ohio. That's the other thing, guys. Always make sure you get active in the comments. There are guys that may be fishing the same lake, same tournaments. Some of the guys here have met each other. They've teamed up fish tournaments, or they just share information on the lakes that have definitely helped each other out. So always make sure you mix and mingle in here. There's, you know, great relationships can be formed in the, in the chat with the subscribers, guys. So basically that is what we are looking for looking to do just build a community of anglers all right and let me just make sure that i haven't missed anybody so jeff newell says colin just dropped 100 dollars on jigs from your website looking forward to hitting lake lanier soon whoa wait a minute okay hold on i'll let colin talk a little bit let me just go ahead and hit mute for a second go ahead what do you have to say thank you jeff um uh, i guess i know what i'm doing tomorrow i'm gonna be making up some custom jigs um uh, Man, dude, send me pictures of anything that you catch on. I definitely want to make sure that I shout you out everywhere. And thank you. Thank you so much. And, like, obviously my dream is to do this full time. And so thank you. That was, that's amazing. So sincerely, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, guys. I mean, this it's really a good thing to me whenever we can come together as a community and start helping each other out, whether it's supporting through buying the products. So, I mean, we see Jeff. I mean, he, he definitely seems like he's going to be a jig fisherman. And also, Jeff, were you fishing jigs before? Or, you know what I mean? Have you been fishing in, been into fishing jigs? Or are you just getting into it? Um, you know, just give us a little bit about you, about you and, you know, what you're looking to get out of these jigs out on the water. All right. And then let's see. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anybody. All right, so Italian Bassmaster says, yeah, my ex-fiance. Hmm, I'm not sure what that's in response to. Maybe it was something that somebody else said in the comments. All right, but let, I'm just trying to get caught up, guys, and then we will continue on. We've been rolling for about an hour and 37 minutes, guys. Time flies when you're having fun. So what we're going to do is just kind of speed things up a little bit because I know people have things to do. So I want to get this information out to you guys. And also, I will clip up some of this so that you guys can come back. If you miss some of the some of the parts of the live stream, you can come back later and, and get caught up on some things. All right. So Mako Mill says, Colin, take care of my buddy Jeff. All right. There we yeah, go. Yes, sir. Um, no, don't worry. There's going to be a little extra stuff thrown in there. All right. Definitely. Definitely. Sounds good. All right. Then we have Italian Bassmaster 14 says we can co-sponsor. All right. So, yes, yeah, so we have a we have a sponsor and we have a little bit of co-sponsoring going on, too. Good deal. Good deal. All right. Then, Chris, uh, how do you pronounce that? DiBiasio. DiBiasio. OK. Is my Chris real name, y'all. OK. All right. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Sounds good. Really, really appreciate that. All right. Delta Bass is my line, my my jig line. Forty pound. Forty pound. Suffix 131 braid. Oh, okay. I thought he was talking about floor carpet or something at first. <laughs> Ooh, I was about to say, man, that's the size of some rope. All right. So he says 131 braid with 20 pound sunline FC sniper leader. All right. There you go. That sniper. I've heard about that line before. I use Seaguar. Um, most the majority of the time, that's what I'm using the Seaguar, but I have used that sniper line a few times. All right. Then we have fish says, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Italian Bassmaster says, I need help learning. All right, okay. All right, so he needs some help learning. Okay, so he's going to be getting into the jig. Anyone who can help me learn Garmin Live Scope, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, Italian Bassmaster 14, man, come on, man. You need to go ahead and join, become a member of the channel. That is the main thing that we do is discuss electronics, your settings, whether you have Garmin, Hummingbird, or Lorance. There's someone that is on this channel in the comments and my subscribers that can uh, help you out with just about anything. I run Hummingbird systems, guys. So the majority, well, pretty much all of the tutorials and everything that I do are going to be based on Hummingbird systems. But a lot of it is going to be like techniques and things like that. Um, so as long as you're trying to learn your uh, electronics, even if it's live imaging, 360, sonar, those type of things, if you search Money Bass and put live imaging, Money Bass, side scan, any of that, I have over 500 videos on YouTube, guys. So, 
I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to find the information that you need. And that's what we will definitely be getting into um, this coming year is more of the electronics tutorials and things like that also. Because like I said, I want to be able to come back on our Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern live streams and hear about the success stories of you guys being out there on the water. All right. And let me just look through here real quick. Um, Colin, I just want to see if there's anybody else that stands out that I might need to address real quick. Uh, let's see. I'm enjoying all of this. I'm, I'm learning stuff, too. So, Oh, yeah, yeah. We're getting into it. And guys, guess what we have? Uh-oh. We have a new member. We have Wendell Wade stepping up. Wendell Wade became a new member of the channel. All right, yeah, Wendell, uh, drop some information in there. Let me know a little bit about you because I haven't seen you in the comments. But, I mean, always appreciate new guys stepping in. And, hey, we're growing. I mean, we were at 5,000, I think, like two or three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, so we've been moving. So now we're sitting around 5,200. I mean, we've been growing fast. So the community is getting bigger. Oh, man, the community is getting bigger. Really, really appreciate this uh, Wendell Wade becoming a member of the channel. All right, so let me see. Let me see who else we had in here. So we had Italian Bassman Sport. Anyone who can help me learn Garmin? Okay, that's where we were at. All right, so he says he just got a new boat. All right, so hey, I mean, do you, Italian Bassmaster 14, do you fish tournaments? Are you fun fishing? Just give us a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of info about what you do. Because like I said, each week we get together. I mean, we're building the community. So a lot of the guys in here, they are, uh, even though we haven't met in person, I, actually, I've met one or two subscribers in person. You guys have seen me at boat ramps. I think I fished with one or two of you guys before, too. But we're here to help each other out. We're still going to be learning things. But yeah, if you put some information in there, uh, you know, about yourself, what type of fishing that you do and everything, we're taking note of that kind of stuff. So as you come up next time, we'll remember that. And if so, for instance, if you're a crappy fisherman, there are guys in here that are fishing crappy tournaments. There are guys in here that are doing that for fun fishing. So, I mean, there's a little bit of something in here for everybody. So just make sure you get active in the comments and just kind of put your information out there so guys can reach out to you. All right. Then we have Fish says, my three favorite jigs from Colin are Marty Craw. What is that? Tennessee Blaze and any gill pattern. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, give, me, give me a second. Let me grab so, it. Real quick. All right. Cool. All right. <laughs> all right. So Colin is off to go and get some, some jigs. Let me... uh. I'll bring him right back up whenever he comes right back. All right. So Jeff Newell says, we'll do. All right. Really, really appreciate it. All right. Then let's see. Mako Mill says, Colin, great information you shared tonight, brother. You really provided valuable insight for fishing jigs. Awesome job. That is definitely true. All right. So, yeah, we have a few other questions um, that I'm going to get into with uh, Colin. But if you guys have any um, like I said, I'm going to try to speed up a little bit because, I mean, we're having fun. We're having fun with it, guys. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I definitely want to get this information out to you also. All right, let me just look and see who else we have in here. All right, all right. Let me see. All right, here we go. So this is a question that is coming up, Michael. What rods, reel, line would you use for jig fishing? So we're about to get into that. And Jeff says, yes, uh, I'm mostly a Kitech, Kitech casting jig man one half ounce pb and j all right all right then we have colin have you ever fished a d and l jig all right i'm gonna bring colin right back up in just a second um let's see who else we have in here all right wendell all right look at that wendell he has that badge right next to his name new member of the money team he says this is also bass life 22 Oh, okay. Okay. I Okay. All right. So you hit me up on Instagram. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Look at this. Italian Bassmaster 14 says, I fish ABA slash Toyota series in Phoenix in 2023. All that's co-angler for now. Uh-oh, guys. All right. He's stepping it up. So I will be fishing the BFLs, guys. And also, what I'm going to do is I will have a live stream where we dedicate it to just talking about the BFLs, putting information out for anybody that has been fishing it or anybody that is, you know, just getting into it. We're going to go over all that stuff, guys. So we have some great things coming. All right. So Jeff Newell says, welcome, Wendell. All right. Sounds good. All right. And Italian Bat. Okay. He has a Phoenix Bass boat. So he's going to be out there doing a little... He's gonna, I think he's going to be speeding. I think he's out there trying to get some speed with that Phoenix boat. What is up with that? All right, let me bring Colin back up. 
All right, here we go. All right, so yeah, so you were, I guess you were grabbing a little something. I had to, you know, he was talking about bluegill, and I think I talked about bluegill earlier. So right. I got to show it off a little bit. It's one that's coming up on the website here soon. And uh, if you look in there, you've got all of the different colors that you would actually see in a bluegill. And then, of course, the chartreuse belly. Oh, yeah, uh, that's nice. And then uh, TN Blaze, just a little green pumpkin, orange and brown action. Uh, but... Uh, had to show them off. I mean, Alex, Alex called them out, so I had to. I had to show them off. I unfortunately <laughs> don't have a Mardi Gras on hand, but um, imagine uh, Mardi Gras, but as a jig um, in the bottom of a lake, and that's that's what it is. All right. Okay. All right. So let me see. Let me just get a few more of these. All right, so we have Sonar5. All right, Sonar5. He says, money in column. Thank you guys for a great evening. Tight lines. All right, really, really appreciate you coming back and supporting the channel as always. All right, Jason, member of the money team. He says, are you fishing Gunnersville at the end of March? Um, I don't think I'll be at Gunnersville in March. I have to check my schedule schedule and see. But whenever we uh, have the live stream, live stream and I'm talking about the BFLs, um, I'll – get more into the the tournaments that I plan on fishing for next year, what lakes I'll be at and things like that. And let's see, let's see who else we have in here real quick. All right, there we go. All right, Jason, member of the money team. That bluegill is awesome. All right, all right. All right, so let me do this. Let me, because I know we had a few more questions. And what I wanted to do is just get through these. So we'll just try to knock each one of these questions out, but still make sure we give some good detail and information about it. <clears throat> All right. Um, hold on one second. Here we go. All right. So the question that was just asked, and this was actually in the comment section, but it was on my list. What action rod, gear ratio reel, and line size do you recommend for those jigs? So I think we went over maybe three or four, well, maybe about five different types of uh, jigs. And so what yeah what setup would you use for each one of those and i guess we can kind of go through that real quick and just touch on those points for each one of those i think it was like five different types of jigs so a lot of them are going to kind of fall all within the same um <clears throat> jigs you, you have to remember as you're fishing them you're you know three quarter ounce half ounce and up whatever size you use but we all know that the standard sizes are going to be three quarter and a half ounce that is a big ass piece of lead and pardon my french there it is a big piece of lead that you are going to be ripping out of that fish's mouth and you still have to pin them with a the hook. So with that, you need two things, a heavy duty rod, something that's got some backbone that you can lay into a hook set. Now, obviously there's going to be some differences there, you know, chatterbaits, things like that. It's going to be a little bit different, but you know, your standard jigs, you need something that's got a lot of backbone and then a high gear ratio because you need to be able to pick up that line as you go. So I personally, I use G Loomis heavy jig and worm rod. I use seven, uh, seven foot, seven, five. Yeah. Seven, five, seven, five, seven, six. Somewhere. Yeah. Seven, five. And then I use an eight, one gear ratio on my reel. What that lets me do is, you know, when you feel, and, and I use fast action, um, when you feel that tick on the end of your rod of a fish, when you feel that bump, it's going to take me a turn and a half to go from right here, you know, straight up to right here to get a solid hook set. Because with, with the jig, you have to have a solid hook set. You know, cranks, anything with, you know, treble hooks, you're kind of leaning into it. It's, it's a different it's a different hook set. You're leaning into it. You are adding a little bit to it, but it's not a jig. With a jig, you are ripping it. So you've got to have something that's got a backbone. Otherwise, you just aren't going to get that solid hook set. I mean, when you right. see that five, six plus pound bass that has that hook that's just ripped through the side of its mouth. And I mean, look, th th these hooks are no joke. That's a stout hook. Right. Um, and somebody was asking, I use Mustad. Um, somebody was asking, um, that's a stout hook to be able to rip that through the side of a fish's mouth. It, 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 it's not a, uh, a task that isn't violent. There, there is, there is some violence behind it. Right. You need that. 
Yeah, and especially the thing that I notice is during the winter months, whenever that water cools down, a lot of guys don't think about it, but setting that hook and getting that hook through the, the mouth of that fish does require a little bit more effort than what it did previously because that cold water does t toughen up that, that skin, that bone, all of that stuff. So you do have to make sure that you have something that you can get, a, a, you know, really drive it home with. I was out um, right when the first like really cold snap came through Tennessee. I was out on Chickamauga and I mean, that's actually true. He does do that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so real uh, quick, Italian Bassmaster 14 says, I give bass CTE when I set the hook. Oh, man, not hitting them with the CTE. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, I use heavy. And, I, I mean, medium heavy certainly is good as well. Uh, I will, for finesse jigs, I will go a little bit different, something a little lighter. You know, when you're using your Ned jigs, when you're using your lighter weight jigs, you know, and here, let me – pull that up you know when you're when you're using these that hook shank is a lot smaller right uh, then you know you're gonna have with those other ones it's not nearly as violent as a hook set and so i'm generally throwing this stuff on a spinning setup seven feet long actually seven seven three actually yeah seven three and then it's just a medium fast action and the reason that it's not a medium heavy or something like this is with that smaller profile, you can bend this hook out. Right. Yeah. And exactly. Anybody who's done the, you know, Ned fishing knows like, don't, whatever you do, do not rip a Ned hook set like you would for a half ounce jig. You will bend that hook right out. That fish is gone. Um, gotcha. So, real quick. So, with that first setup you showed, that was, you said that was what, a 7.5 with a high gear ratio reel. And yes. what size line did you say you throw on that? So it, it depends on the time of year, honestly. Mm -hmm. And well, time of year plus what I'm fishing. Um, Italian Bassmaster had thrown out there earlier that he uses, was it 40 pound braid with 25 pound fluoro. Okay. In Tennessee, there's a lot of really nasty structure under the water. You know, you may, you get your braid into it. It cuts through that first little bit of, you know, rotted wood. And then when it hits that heavy part or that part that hasn't rotted yet, Mm -hmm. right off gotcha flora and so a lot of times when i'm going to somewhere that i'm going to be in that i'm running through a lot of you know lay down i'm running through a lot of structure things like that that it is just going to wear and tear on my line i'm roughly the same i don't i don't do 25 but that's just because i have yeah. those pilots on my rods um i do i do 20 um so it's usually i'll do for it, like for heavy duty stuff, 40 to 20, my go-to is 30 braid and between 12 and 15 fluoro. Gotcha. Uh, just okay. depending. And then and in so, the way, I use so, a lighter. So real quick, so that first setup, that's pretty much for any bait that you're going to be dragging. You that those are um like your the ball head jig, the um, and I guess anything that is what maybe that uh three quarter ounce or heavier is that yes. that type of setup. But then if you're throwing something like a quarter ounce or smaller, then you're gonna throw it with that spinning reel setup. And what what size line do you throw on that spinning reel? So this one I've got 15 pound braid to 10 pound fluoro. Okay, yeah. That that leader changes depending on what's going on. Occasionally I fish for trout. So sometimes that leader goes to four pound test, but that's not used for bass. Ooh, okay. Okay. Uh -oh. Living dangerously. Okay. <laughs> got to, got to match their eyesight. Um, gotcha. For that, I'm, I'm usually a little bit lighter. Again, you're not getting into the same kind of stuff that you're getting into when you're throwing your big heavy duty jigs into a bunch of brush. You know, inherently they're lighter jigs. They're not going to get down into it all. You're mm -hmm. throwing into lighter brush. Uh, so it, it depends. Occasionally I'll drop down to eight if I'm feeling really dangerous uh, for bass. But okay. if I do that, I can assure you they're not getting flipped. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, so with mine, I, I generally, like on my spinning rod, I'll, I'll throw, I think, 20-pound braid. I throw like a high-vis yellow, and then nice. I'll uh, put a 12-pound mono – I'm sorry, 12-pound 
fluorocarbon leader on it. And that's pretty much what I throw on my shaky head. Sometimes I'll swap that out and throw like a smaller Texas rig or a smaller jig on there. So that's my setup on that spinner reel. So that's like your dragon baits and then your small ones. And then what do you throw for like the other ones, like your swim jig and your, your chatter bait? I'm guessing that you probably throw the same line and setup for those, for those moving baits. I, I don't actually. Uh -oh, so I'll, okay. Okay. Uh, so I'll use a little bit shorter rod than I normally do for a swim jig. Um, simply, simply because generally when I'm throwing a swim jig, I'm throwing it for shorter casts. It can be used for longer casts. I would recommend using it on something that you can throw for longer casts. This is just tailored to me personally. Gotcha. I'm just medium heavy with a swim jig. Uh, it's a stouter hook than the others. However, that fish is on the move and you're not worried about pulling a half ounce of a football jig or an arky jig out of their mouth. You're pulling something right. straight out. So that just pops out and then the hook sticks. So you don't need the same hook setting power. I've actually done that where I've taken only my heavy rod out and I'll run a swim jig on it because, well, that's what they're hitting. Mm -hmm. I've, I've ripped it out of their mouth before. Not saying that you can't catch them on a heavy. You can, and I've done it plenty of times, but I have right. ripped ripped it straight out of their mouth before uh, with that. And then the chatterbait, and this is, you know, ultimately fishing is all personal preference, but there are people that may disagree with me on this one. They may not. I use a chatter or I use a um, crankbait rod for my chatterbaits. Oh, okay. Uh, reason being, you know, as it comes through the water, you're going to have a lot of that same feel that you're getting from, you know, whether it be a deep diving crank or whatever the case may be, this rod is meant to be able to take that. So when it loads up using a chatterbait, it loads up similarly to a, um, like a, a crankbait. You do have to get a solid hook set. I have never lost a fish on a chatterbait using one of these, using a crankbait rod. And I'm still send, I'm still living in that six and a half or six and a half, seven and a half foot range and medium heavy. Cause again, same thing. You're not worried about ripping that giant, you know, piece of lead out of their mouth. And I don't want to overdo it. So there's me personally. Now, when I throw chatter baits, I will differ a little bit. I go straight fluoro. I don't use braid. I don't, gotcha. I don't I'm running straight fluoro. I just like the way that it performs in the water better. Right. Yeah, that's pretty much how I run mine also. And so I guess with the throwing that on that cranking rod, how it's going to have a lot more flexibility in the rod itself is the 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 hook itself. Is it more of a thinner hook or is it still like one of those beefy hooks that you have in there? So it's it's not the it's not the swim jig hook. It's actually I think I've got one around here. Now that I think I do. It's not the swim jig hook, so it's not going to be as stout. So looking at that. It's, gotcha. it's, not, it's not needle, you know, not quite a needle. It'll still stand up to a hook set, but you don't need nearly as much to pull that through the side of a fish's mouth as you do when you're using something hanging out on the bottom. Gotcha. Okay. And then let's see. So, yeah. So Rick Patterson, he is a member of the Patreon. I, I kind of figured that, uh, that you heard Rick. All right. So he says, Jason, uh, let me see. So I guess they're doing a little chatting in the comments themselves, but he's asking Jason, what's your favorite trailer? So I guess, Colin, I guess what, what would be your answer to that? What is your favorite trailer? I guess if you were to, let's just look at it like this. Let's say if of all the different ones that we named, if there was just going to be one trailer that you were going to have on and use it, what would be your favorite trailer to go with? But I guess you can't really do that. We have to have a, a like, like a swim bait style trailer and then maybe like a crawl type okay i guess those would be the yeah i can i can live with that all right craw type um i'm, I'm just gonna go and, and name exactly the trailer that i prefer the excite raptor tail chunk it is unbelievable um it is the perfect compact chunk and the claws are floating so what that does is it puts your jig in defense position, no matter how it's sitting in the water, whether you're propped on a rock weird or this or that, or whatever the case may be that may throw your presentation off a little bit, those claws float and bring you right back to where you need to be. 
Gotcha. Um, and then, you know, outside of that for bait fish, paddle tail. Um, it's not, my, it's not my go-to for a bladed. Uh, my go-to for a bladed is going to be a fluke all day. However, you can't work this as well on a straight swim jig as you can with the paddle tail <laughs> right. really, to fix the bladed jig issue, flip it upside down and you're good to go. So I'll throw a paddle tail as a trailer for bait fish all day. And then just a simple uh, excite chunk for my trailer. If, if I had to pick two. Gotcha. All right. And let's see. So we have Italian Bassmaster 14 says I am fishing old hickory tomorrow. Is anyone free? <laughs> <laughs> looking for a fishing buddy all right all right okay and so <laughs> all right so i guess that is the answer to that question let me just go ahead and read it one more time what action rod gear ratio and reel size do you recommend for each all right so there we go guys that is that question answer for you let's hop into another one real quick all right so one of the subscribers asked this one all right what colors are crawfish during each month and discuss like the kind of behavior? So I guess like the type of action that you want to use and the specific trailers. I know it's some sometimes people use more of a, a trailer. And actually, I have something that I could show you guys more like a, a no action chunk trailer. It doesn't really have that much action to it. Mm -hmm. So something like that um, versus a. Um, like that's a rage crawl. So that one has more of a fluttering action when it falls. So it has more action whenever it's moving. So the question is, what colors are crawfish during each month and discuss the crawfish behavior? So by month is a little difficult, but I can go by early and late seasons. Um, gotcha. Okay. And what I'll do also is I have, let me just go ahead and remove this real quick. But what I'll do is I will share the screen and pull up um, this chart that I that I found, and it has some different crawl colors on it, and that may help out too. So let's I'll go ahead and pull that up while you're talking. Yeah. So early springtime, you know, when everybody's starting to get back out, um, th that's when your crawfish are going to be green pumpkin. Um, so they're coming out of the color that they just were. They're starting to get more of that vitamin A into them. There's the water starting to clear up. They're going from that dark, nasty color that they are now to that green, that standard green pumpkin. As the spring goes on and, you know, as it gets warmer, that's going to change slightly. It's going to become green pumpkin with light orange, you know, and as we continue on into the summertime, that's when they start to get more orange. And so, I mean, here's an example. The, uh, the jig that I held up earlier with the brown and orange, this is exactly you back up real quick. Cool. Oh, you're good. That's exactly what I would throw in the summer, um, both early and late. Um, now, early summer is when they're starting to get that color. Late summer is when they're starting to hit that red or that watermelon red, where you're seeing either truly red crawfish, which do exist. They're more difficult to find, but they do exist. And they're more, uh, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, they're more in like the Louisiana area. They're more in the bayous where you'll find that bright red crawfish. We do have some, you know, in Tennessee, I can't speak to other places that do turn a darker red hue, but not quite that bright red. Um, and then watermelon red where it's green and then the red that's popping into it. And you were, you had mentioned using that color earlier on. Right. And, uh, I can't remember the name of the lake that we were talking about. Probably um, you follow, I think. Yes. Uh, using that watermelon red color, that's the perfect time of year. That's when they're that color. Um, and, you know, as we start getting into fall, which, you know, it's all our favorite time to fish, that's when they're starting to get a little bit darker. They're getting back into green pumpkin and then dark browns and then really dark greens. So even darker than a green pumpkin. And I've got I've got one that I can that I'll show up here in a little bit. So there's your standard green pumpkin, even darker than that. And that's what they're doing through the fall. And then when you start hitting winter, that's when your black and blues become reality. Not right. that they have black and blue year round, but that's when you're going to find mostly black and blue craws. And this is something that I had had tied up that I like using in the winter. It's black and blue, but I've also got a little bit of dark green pumpkin in there. 
to give it that natural look. I mean, wintertime, I'll throw this almost solely. Uh, and it just, and, it works. It and check it. out this comment real quick. Team Zipperlip says, back up a sec. I'm going to share a secret. The Tennessee River has blue crawls in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. So, which part of the Tennessee River? Because I'm ready. <laughs> year round. So, put me in a spot that has Blue Cross in the summer. I'm there. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to slide that in there. But, um, so, and then I pulled up this color chart. Uh, there we go. Let's see. So, I mean, this kind of shows how, and even with some of those uh, live pic pictures of live crawls that I pulled up, uh, that I found earlier, I didn't pull that up. But um, if you look at these colors on here, how they have a lot of mixtures of like that that green pumpkin. So that green pumpkin is kind of universal in all of these different ones, but then they just have different highlights. Like you can see some some orange highlights, and that seems very common. Then you have like the ones that have that blue. So the, you have your black and blues. And I know you guys can't see my mouse, but I'm just kind of moving it around on the screen. Like on that second column, you see that one that has that blue in it. But the, the main thing to me that I noticed is that green pumpkin with that slight orange, you know, with that slight orange color to it. And so for me, even when I'm fishing uh, muddy water, I have found that if I'm throwing something that has that, that green pumpkin and chartreuse in it a little bit, that I still, they still would hit it. And so to me, I just got to where I try, I try to keep my, my colors just nice and simple. The, the, um, the green pumpkins and the brownish colors with a little bit of orange in it. And I'm ready to roll and I'll, I'll dip it in a little bit of chartreuse. And like I said, even earlier with that blood red JJ's, I'll still put just a little bit of that. And I don't really, let me see, maybe that one right there. Let's see. So you can kind of see the pinches on there, have a little bit of a different color, but that's just one of the skirts that I made, but that's like with a rage crawl on it. But I'll just dip just the very tip of those pinchers in like a blood red color. So, but I mean, you know, probably know better than me, like the different times of the, the different seasons, but I just pretty much keep it simple and I'm throwing the same, you know, the same thing. So maybe there is a time if I paid attention, maybe there is a certain time of the year where I'm getting, getting more bites than others, but I haven't dialed it in like that yet so and then, and then it's funny because you we talked earlier about you know selling selling the fishermen if if you look at any one of my designs you're not going to find anything crazy you're not going to find ridiculous colors you're not going to find things that wouldn't naturally be found in nature right certainly there are things that i accentuate i mean chartreuse not really a natural color in nature however the way bass perceive it, they perceive it as a very bright white. They don't actually see chartreuse the same way that we do. So with all of that, you, you look at it, my, my jigs aren't like all over the place. Yeah, I have June bug, certainly, but even that's a natural color. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't go crazy. I don't go out there. I'm, I'm the jig maker who you look at my box and Pay attention to what I have four and five of. That's what I use consistently. I have everything yeah. that I make in my box. Certainly, <laughs> and that's you know, it's, it's one of those like I have to. Right, right. Look at the colors that I use. I use variations of the same colors year round, and it's yeah. because I, I mean, look at all the different colors out there. Look at the crazy color jigs that are out there. I mean, outside of you know you know, great lakes and, and oceans and things like that, where you do see all of that stuff more naturally and a little bit differently, you know, those crazy colors aren't really gonna, aren't really gonna do it. Right. Yeah. So let me just pull that back up one more time. All right, guys. So that, that was the answer to that question. Hold on. Let me just take a quick look and make sure that we got it. What colors are crawfish during each month? So we didn't necessarily touch each month, kind of like a seasonal type thing, and kind of discuss the crawfish behaviors in the in the wintertime, maybe a little more lethargic and using a trailer like the one that I that I showed you that has a little less action to it, and just kind of as temperatures pick up, then you kind of want to adjust the trailer trailers accordingly. All right, so we got that one knocked out. All right, so let's see, let's see what is another. Then I I dropped the comment down here from oh actually hold on just a second guys 
we have somebody stepping into the live stream. Let me pull this back up real quick. Got to show a little bit of, put some respect on her name. We have Maggie, the substitute teacher, dropping in again. I mean, she is one of the strongest supporters of the channels, guys. But look at her. Look at her comment. Maggie says, no idea what y'all are talking about. So I'm just supporting. <laughs> look at that. So Maggie is not a fisherman, guys. She is a chef. She does um, some some home cooking that is pretty much what her youtube channel is about guys so what she does maggie the substitute teacher substitute stands for she substitutes the bad ingredients with healthy ingredients so whenever i first saw her name i thought that it was maggie the substitute teacher like she actually was a substitute teacher in school but what she does is she teaches you um because there's a lot of i mean and this is something that i think is very important within our fishing community guys because a lot of us we get out there during our tournaments we may just grab some junk food and things like that and eat that and think that we're going to have a great outcome on on the lake out there eating candy bars drinking sodas all kinds of crazy stuff and as you get a little older those health issues start creeping in that is another thing that i like about this community that we're building because there's there's guys that reach out to me that are having health issues that aren't able to get out there and enjoy the lakes like we are right now. So if you look on my channel, sometimes you'll see maybe a video where all I'm doing is just getting in my boat, starting it up, and I'm running the lake for 10 or 15 minutes. For me, as I'm running that lake and I'm putting that footage out there for guys, I'm thinking of the guys that can't get out on the water, that maybe want to. Maybe they have some type of back injury or some other health problem to where they can at least live through that video and just remember the breeze, remember the smells, remember the sounds of being out there on the water. But it kind of comes back to we have to take care of our health, guys. So going back to Maggie, she will you can eat some of those same meals. But what she will show you is how to substitute maybe not putting in salt or putting as much salt or substituting different type of sugars and, and things like that. So it's really, like I would say, a health conscious thing that we do need to take heed of, guys. So yes, we talk about fishing, but you always have to keep your health in mind because once that health starts going and you don't take care of yourself, man, I mean, just think if you couldn't get back out there on the water for the guys that still can. There's some guys that are dealing with that, so we don't think about it, but it boils down to our health, guys. But definitely want to give a special shout out to Maggie always stopping in and supporting the channel even though she says no idea what y'all are talking about she's like i don't know what a jig is or a shaky head and what what is going on over here but hey i'll just stop in and support really really appreciate that maggie all right and let's see let me get I'm glad man. that she popped in here because uh i i immediately as soon as you started explaining what she did i immediately went and subscribed because i oh, love right her. and we have a lot of uh, allergies in our house so that's that's amazing. And she I, mentioned stuff like that. The other thing about it, guys, is her cooking shows are live. So you can sit there and chit chat with her while she's cooking everything, ask her questions. And yeah, I mean, it's a great time. So she's in there dancing around, having fun, all of that good stuff. And she has a split screen to where she's actually showing you like as she's cooking it. So kind of like how I'm on one side, you're on the other side. So one side will have her like with the 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 bowl, the ingredients, and all that kind of stuff. So, it, yeah, it's, it's a nice setup that she has. So I definitely say check it out, guys, and subscribe to her channel because all of us can use some help whenever it comes to uh, eating a little more healthy. All right, so let's see who else we – yeah, really, really appreciate that, Maggie. All right, so let's see who else we have. So we have some guys hopping in here real quick. All right, so JJ's – so Delta Bass says, JJ's methylate dip the green pumpkin tips – in the money yeah so i know what he's saying so that i do use that methylate so yeah i'll use that methylate but what i'll do is i will take let's see so this is one of the trailers that i use guys this is a z crawl i love the z crawl right so that z crawl you see those ribbed edges on there so what i'll do is i will take a q-tip and just dip it in that methylate on a green pumpkin um z crawl and just kind of run it down the, the edges of that bait on each side. And with that crawl, what it does is it, it kind of mixes in and starts blending in, and it gives it a unique color. And if you look at the crawl by itself, it just starts making it look more lively. Whenever you actually look at a crawfish that you've pulled out of a, the fish's mouth, it, it'll start matching it whenever you get those colors right. So, yeah, I'll put a little bit of that methylate on there, and I'll put some chartreuse 
and just but just a little bit. You don't want to overdo it because it's just those little ch subtle changes. And if you take a look at this chart that I that I brought up a little earlier, you kind of look at their legs, see how their legs are kind of a different color from the bodies. So to me, I'm just trying to imitate that. And I like hitting it with that methylate like you see down toward the bottom. Um, the second row from the bottom, that one that kind of has that red to it, that methylate, it kind of glows in the water. So that is a good comment. So like he said, yeah, that is a that is a little, you know, a little trick of the trade right there. All right. And then Team Zipper, Zipper Lips said, God bless Maggie. Yes, yes. So Maggie's out there. She's helping people out. Um, anybody with health issues or I mean, hey, I mean, she's cooking pastries, desserts, all kinds of stuff. So you don't just have to look at it from a health perspective, but you may be able to eat two or three instead of just one half of something whenever, you know, you follow her, <laughs> follow some of the stuff that she's doing. All Martha. right. Yeah. So we have Gabriel. He says, I color my non-black and blue jig trailer claws orange. Just the tip, though. That's it. So, yes, that is that is the tip. That is a good tip right there. All right. So let's see. I guess we have. Man, it's 1016. I guess we'll hit one more, one more question. Let's see what are the best types of trailers. All right. Did we we didn't talk about what are the best types of trailers to use based on the season? So I guess we kind of touched on that. So I guess what um let's see. And then when is it better to fish shallow versus offshore? All right. So this is what we would do. All right. So the next question that we'll do, we'll kind of double it up. And um the question is, well, the questions are. What are the best types of trailers to use based on the season and the action of the bait? And when is it better to fish offshore versus shallow? And I guess which one of the which, you know, one or two of those baits would you use um, if you're fishing offshore versus shallow? So, I mean, as far as trailers go, there, there's so much that can be done with just one trailer. Uh, a lot of it comes down to what you do with it. The one that you were showing off earlier with the very little action to it, everything that's done with that trailer, every bit of the action that comes from that comes from your hands, right. comes, comes from us. So you can, you can make that exaggerated. You can make that very, very dead. Um, I'm usually sticking with something similar to this. Exactly. The, the net bait. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the reason reason for that is it's similar to the excite chunk that not x yeah, yeah the um, raptor tail chunk that I was talking about before in that the claws are amazing, but as you look at them, there's no real action that's going to come from them that you or I don't make. Like while I love you know the rage craw as a jig trailer, it's not going to work year round. So. Right. You wouldn't want to use that in the winter time. You wouldn't want to use that late fall, early spring when the water's cold because those craws are just, they're, they're creeping along. That's going to be a lot of action that's coming because no matter how slowly you creep that along the bottom, those, those claws are going like this the whole, the whole time. Right. So it's tough. I would, I would almost rather throw, not almost, I would rather throw this in the winter time. Because while it still has some sort of action on the uh, on the appendages, it's not anything that's just created by pulling it through the water. You have to, again, do the work to it. And when you drag that along the bottom, unless you're making it do all of the extra stuff, again, it's going to be that. So I would definitely use those in the wintertime when it's colder and the craws are more you know laid back. But I would also use them year round. For me, it's mm -hmm. more how I present it to the fish. That being said, there are definitely ones that I would use. I would be less likely to use in the winter time. And they're with the ones that have the crazy appendages that are great. Just maybe not in the winter time. Right. Exactly. And then as far as whether you're someone fishes shallow or offshore, um, are there certain, which trailers would you say, you know, for shallow versus offshore? And I guess, that that first part you did kind of answer that i would say as far as shallow water goes because you know with shallow water like you said less action when the water is colder and more more action when the water warms up is it kind of the same that you would say for offshore fishing or yeah uh i mean regardless of where they are deep or shallow they're, they're going to be acting similarly not the exact same a crawfish that's 
six inches off the shore and a crawfish that's 25 feet deep, there's going to be at least a five, six, maybe 10 degree difference in the two. So they're going to act a little bit differently. Right. But in the wintertime, it's all, or not in the wintertime, it's all relative to where they are. That crawfish that's six inches off the shore is mm-hmm. going to be is off the shore in four months. That crawfish that's in 25 feet of water is still going to be in 25 feet of water in four months. It's all relative to where they're at. Crawfish aren't aren't as migratory as bass. They're not coming up shallow to spawn. They're not going back deep and this and that. A lot of times they just kind of stay where they are. They burrow into the mud instead of go deeper. So with that, I mean, as far as trailers, if I'm, if it's winter time, I'm going to, I'm going to follow the same thing where, you know, kind of a more dead, less action on the trailer, no matter what I'm at, what I'm doing, no matter what. Gotcha. Okay. Whereas in the summertime, you know, it really depends. Uh, are we looking at clear water? Are we looking at murky water? If we're looking at clear water, I'm going to use something more like that. If we're looking at murky water, I'm looking for something that's got the ridges and something that's going to throw off more water movement. Um, if it's, if it is very murky water, that's when I like to throw the rage craw because you do have the big flapping claws and big flapping appendages and it's moving that water around. So it's drawing them into you. So it, it's, it's tough to say because I'll use the same trailer in every situation. Whereas I, you know, I'll know that, yeah, okay. It might not be the best one for the situation, but it's also my confidence. So, you know, whatever you feel most confident in, because Ultimately, these two trailers run nothing alike. They don't work the same way. They do, but they don't. Right. And, you know, if you are extremely confident with just the pocket chunk, great. You know how to work that in the wintertime, summertime, springtime, everything perfect. Right. And adjust it. But yeah, and, and I would say that the thing is. The number one thing is you have to fish with what you are confident with, because if you are fishing with something and you're feeling like it's not going to bite, you're going to put that down and pick up something else. And so now when you put that jig down, but that other person you're competing against keeps that jig on and they're a little more, you know, they have that mindset right because they're fishing something that they have that confidence in and they keep it on. That may be the person that brings in that bigger bass because on average, jigs are known to catch the bigger fish that are in that area. So that's something to always keep yes, in mind, sir. guys. All I mean, right. So, what good, say? Oh, I was just saying a really good example of that. I was fishing a, a tournament early this year, um, springtime tournament. And, you know, we're all over the lake. I, you know, we all, we all use a myriad of, of different items. I won on jigs alone. That was the only thing I caught a f- any fish that I could call on. I did throw my swim bait after mm-hmm. I had caught my limit and was like, all right, I'm going to start calling. I caught a 12 inch fish on an eight inch swim. <laughs> <bait>. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the thing. So that's my plan for next year. As I step up and start fishing um, more of the, the bigger size tournaments, I'm kind of changing up from fishing because normally I would be fishing for points and things like that. But now, you know, I'm fishing for more of the size, you know, bigger bags and things like that. So I'm going to kind of get my jig arsenal set up. So I have more than, you know, one or two. I may have like two or three jig setups on the boat that I, you know, I keep and start using those a little more often. All right. But man, we've been rolling. I don't know if you see what time it is, but we've been rolling for almost two and a half hours. All right, so Colin, really, really appreciate you taking the time out to bring this information and, you know, just share share that knowledge with everybody. But go ahead and shout out. Let me just drop this down real quick. Go ahead and shout out your Instagram and your website again so everybody knows where to find you at. Um, Instagram is just at RPM Jigs and then RPMJigs.com is the website currently under construction. So bear with us (laughs) Um, and uh, just, you know, Keep, keep an eye out. Follow us. We're, we're getting ready. We have like the next six months of releases set up. Um, RPM Jigs is actually about to not rebrand, but somewhat rebrand into RPM Tackle. Jigs are still the main thing. That's my passion. But um, right, been getting into cranks, swim baits, lipless, all the all the other fun things. So going to be going to be expanding. So 
keep following. And, uh, you know, I'm always looking for product testers as we're releasing stuff. So, you know, if you follow and you like and you comment, you're the first person that I think of when it comes to this. Stuff. <laughs> All right. So there we go, guys, members of the money team and the Patreon. So I know we had Jason. We have Joseph. All right. And some of the guys are checking in. So we have Joseph, um, Rick Patterson. There's a few other guys that were in here. Make sure you guys send him a message on Instagram. I see Rick Patterson has already hit me up on my Instagram. And if you don't have uh, Instagram, just look in the description area. There's a few other ways like my email, moneybass404 at gmail.com. Just make sure the guys that are members of the money team and the Patreon, you guys reach out to me because, because like I said, what we're doing, we're going to get some product over to you guys. And we kind of want to base that on what um, your techniques are, what your strong areas are fishing so that you can come back and we'll do a follow up with Colin and, you know, and maybe like two or three months. Of course, we want to wait for the weather to change a little bit. But I mean, we'll be here every Tuesday, guys. So as you if you guys are out there on the water getting results, go ahead and make sure you give us updates on on Tuesdays. But I'll have a follow up show with Colin and then we'll go over a few things and, you know, touch on what is, uh, you know, what is working at that time as we get ready to head into our 2023 season. All right, Colin, really, really appreciate it, man. I know you have to get off and go do some things and I have to get off and go do some things. Perfect. All right, guys, make sure you hit the like button on the way out. If you did not hit it on the way in, really, really appreciate you guys supporting the channel. And I will see you guys on the next live stream. All right. See you later, Colin. Appreciate it. No, thank you. All right. All right, guys.